Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games, gonna be streaming our Wednesday night tournament here. Got uh, about 10 to a dozen players out there now getting ready for our weekly Wednesday Pokemon event that we're gonna be hosting here at Full Grip Games. Got a little bit until we get started, but just gonna get this stream up and rolling here so we can get some people into the audience. What's up, Natalie? Natalie's gonna be helping me out tonight. She is here at Full Grip Games, gonna be doing the runner duties, helping me out running between the tournament table and uh, the studio here. So we have her help, which will be awesome because that means that I will not have to get up. Yeah, and we don't have to do any of that be right back stuff. We're just gonna be rocking and rolling here while we prepare. So while we get ready for the tournament to get up and rolling, should start any minute now, I can pop on over to PTCGO and just kind of hang out here. What's up, George Flareon? Hey, yes, awesome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So I'm gonna pop over to some PTCGO here real quick. Uh, while we wait for our round one to go up for the tournament, uh, it could be like four, four rounds, I guess, four rounds, maybe five rounds, depending on how many people we get. Uh, like I said, there's probably close to a dozen now, so stoked on that. And then depending on how we're doing here, at the end of the night, at the end of the tournament, may have a couple of my friends feature for some old school, old deck Pokemon trading card game action on the stream table as well. So make sure to stay tuned for that. That should be pretty sweet also. My buddy uh, Nick Baker and Lance and Justin have a huge collection of old decks. Absolutely gigantic collection of old decks from the uh, 90s, early 2000s. So a lot of cool stuff from that era. So I'd be excited to show off some of that also. Gonna wait for Natalie's cue here. Uh, when she tells me that we're ready to go for the tournament. Till then, I got some packs of Unleashed that I am excited to open. So I'm going to crack some of those. What's up, Ewok? Thank you for joining us. I hope you guys all had an excellent Christmas slash are having an excellent holiday with families and hopefully some time off. That would be amazing. Look at this pseudo wudo. The artwork on this thing is nuts. I feel like I've never seen this before. This thing is sweet. Uh, it's got an attack push over. What's up, Matt Price? Would you like to come see? Are you streaming? I am streaming. The tournament? I am streaming the tournament, yes. Uh, would you like to come choose your fighters? For uh, have Natalie choose. Oh, okay. Yep, she's right. going to be the runner. Thank you, Matt Price. Appreciate it. Sweet. So. Matt has told me that the tournament should be about ready to go. Round one pairings are up, so we're going to be getting those up and rocking here any second. So Natalie will pick a round one for us, and then we're going to get to check that out here on the tournament table. We got two Kakunas. Check that out. This seems wrong. I think none of these are even hollow. Why did we get two? All right. Broken pack. Why did we get two Kakunas? Can anybody answer me that question? Neither of these are reverse hollow. But there is no reason for this. Why do we do, why do we get two? That's a broken pack if I've ever seen it. And a Zatu here. That's pretty rad. Check that fell out. Two Kakunas though. That is uh, no bueno. I don't know why we got that. But anyways, it's fine. We'll open another. Glitched pack, everybody. We've got a glitched pack of Unleashed here. The algorithms must be going a little haywire. But that's all good. Hopefully, I mean, it'd be sweet if it happened with like a good card, right? I mean, if you got like two like busted rare cards that'd be pretty dope but two kakunas uh, i don't really know yeah i know right like what's going on i don't know it's fine it's just going with the flow here pokemon circulator your opponent switches his reactive pokemon with one of his revenge pokemon that's interesting uh it's not quite a escape rope right it's not quite a pokemon catcher torterra in that pack all right we got two more packs and then hopefully natalie's gonna be coming back here with the updates. We got MC's Chatter, that was cool. Saw the new Spider-Man movie, oh yeah! Busted Shaman, this Shaman's actually super good. It was used in a lot of decks from this era all the way up until the time that it rotated. It was used in 
I think like those uh, the Darkrai lists, like those early Darkrai lists, like Darkrai Mewtwo lists, because you just would, you know, pop down Shaman Celebration Wind and move all your energy from a Mewtwo to a Darkrai or from a Darkrai to a Mewtwo, take big one-hit KOs. So really incredible stuff here. This Shaman is awesome, and I'm really excited to have one. I had one, and then I traded it away. So I'm glad to have another one back here on the account. That is like a sick rip. Probably one of the better cards that I can open in Triumphant. So super sick. I saw the new Spider-Man movie, like I was saying. Oh, yeah, until I was interrupted by that. And also a Tyranitar Prime. Check it out. This thing is super dope. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So sick rip here. What's up, Jam, you boy? Welcome to the stream. New, st new Spider-Man movie was pretty dope. I enjoyed it. I'm not a super big Spider-Man fan, but I did have a lot of fun, and I thought the animation looked awesome. What's up, Natalie? Round one's ready. Round All right, so we got round one over ready now. here. Let me type in their names because I had to take a picture. Okay, so. I did Justin, who was playing the Meganium. Okay, right. Justin's on which side of the um, road? When he sits down, I'll have you. Okay. He should, um, he'll be on the, the right side because they're the, He'll be on the what side? Bring up the screen again. Okay. So we are getting our round one pairings Bruce. up here. It's over here. Okay, got it. Yep. Um, so which one is Justin? I don't, where did I, let me look. All right. She'll be right back, and she will let us know. We're going to have Justin. Justin is playing some sort of crazy deck here. Uh, it's got, like, Meganium in it, and it's also got, like, Charizard. It's uh, pretty crazy. Uh, it's like and it's like a, a deck out this deck. This should be. I think one of the dudes got tattoos in his hands. So that's not Justin, this right? Be Justin. All right, yeah, excellent. So, here we go. So we've got Justin Bookter versus uh, Natalie. Who's the the other player? Okay. So let's see. We got Justin. Okay, and then. Versus. I'll okay. Natalie's going to help me out here. What's up, Oxella Sun? Welcome, guys. Welcome. Right, go. All right. Michetti. Nick Michetti. I'm not sure what he's playing. On the left, and we don't know what Nick is playing. I'm going to go sit down and make sure everything goes All right. Down, so. Thank you for running, Natalie, and then let me know what the next round is. Will do. Appreciate it. Awesome. We got our records up here. Players are setting up now. And we'll go ahead and cut on over to our tournament table. Sweet. Omega Scizor. Welcome. I had an excellent... Excellent Christmas. Hopefully you all had the same. Let's see. There we go. All right. So over to our tournament table. Set up. Looking good. Looking fine. Ready to roll. So uh, like I said, we've got Justin's playing some sort of wild deck here. He has got uh, Meganium in his deck. He's also got a Charizard GX and Rhyperior. So his goal is to stream Rhyperiors, get as many Rhyperiors into play as he can. And Rhyperior has an ability that mills the opponent's deck three cards when he evolves it. So I think his goal is to use Rhyperior and then eventually Charizard GX to mill his opponent out of a deck. So very fun to see a mill deck in standard format. Haven't seen a mill deck in some time. And I'm talking about an active mill deck. I've seen plenty of stall decks, decks that more or less don't like mill really, maybe Rocket's handiwork, but just try to prevent the opponent from taking prizes. Justin's deck is an active mill deck where he's trying to utilize attacks and abilities that just burn the top cards of his opponent's decks. So excited to get Justin on stream here so that we can see this deck in action. I had not heard about this deck previously until tonight. So this should be an exciting game for us. It does sound like there are a lot of you know moving pieces in Justin's deck. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if those can all come together to formulate a winning strategy for Justin. And like I said, no idea what's on Nick's side, but interested to see what Nick has brought to the table here. And thank you all for showing up. Hopefully you all had an excellent holiday. Appreciate y'all hanging out on the stream. Applied for a partner status just the other day. I think uh, whatever my last stream was, so over the weekend, applied for partner status. So still waiting to hear back from that. 
I wouldn't blame Twitch if it takes a little while for them to get back to me because it is that holiday time. So we've got obviously Christmas this week, New Year's next week. So might take a little bit to get that confirmation, but I am looking forward to it. We got all the stats that we need for partner status. We streamed our 12 times in 30 days. We had an average of 100 viewers. We got all our pieces in order. We streamed for like 30 hours. We had plenty of stream time. What's up, y'all? What's up, HP Tang? Awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. I appreciate it. And let's see, players are still sitting around, waiting, waiting, getting ready to get started. Everything looks good to go on our end. So hopefully they get up and rolling here soon. Not going to be attending the Dallas Regional Championships. Unfortunately, I was looking into it. I really wanted to attend, but oh, here we go. Players are getting started. So got Justin Bookter on the right. He will play first. He starts with the Rhyhorn. Not a card that we really ever see in standard format. And I apologize if I don't know right off the top of my head what Rhyhorns or Rhydons or Rhyperiors attacks are. I am familiar with everything else. We do see a Mudkip and a Chikorita on Justin's bench ready to evolve, right? Uh, it does look like uh, Nick is playing a Rayquaza deck. And the thing is, is that the Rayquaza deck is a deck that mills itself, right? It does tend to mill itself, so that could play into Justin's favor, but it looks like Justin's hand is bad. He does not play a turn one supporter, and Nick is playing a very aggressive Vika Ray deck. So this could spell absolute disaster for Justin's complicated uh, evolution-based deck here. We see Justin draw a card. Looks like it's an Ace Rolla, and that is not going to help him at all in his quest to set up. He doesn't have any evolution pieces. He doesn't have any sort of rare candy. Nick has got to be very excited at this prospect here. I can't see his hand, but he does have a Rayquaza in the active, two Lightnings on it now, a Grubbin on his bench, and a Zorora on his bench. So that Rayquaza does have free retreat, but oh, Nick has to just pass as well, and now they're passing back and forth. This is unbelievable. Nick does not even have a grass. At oh, he does have the grass. I was going to say, he didn't have the grass, and he couldn't Tempest the previous turn. That would have been a good play for him to at least be able to Tempest. We see Justin just bench a Suicune GX, and I, truthfully, guys, do not know what the Suicune does. So that is just a, uh, a no-go for me. I would have to look up the Suicune. If it comes into the active position, I'm going to look that Suicune up and see what it does. I forget. I remember reading the translation back when the set dropped, but honestly, have not seen this. All right. Now would be a pretty good time for the Concede emote. If I had it uh, on the channel, it's going to be one of the first things that I do when I get partner status is create a Concede emote. <laughs> Nick Machete, oh my gosh, has got the Vicable in play. Rayquaza is just going to go on milling his uh, deck, looking for the energy for that, uh, that ability there. And yes, this is looking really, really disastrous for Justin. I'll go ahead and check and see what that Suicune GX does because I'm not exactly sure. So let's check that out just on the old Google. Suicune GX, see what we're looking at here on Justin's side though. I think it's getting knocked out. Yeah, I mean, this is bad. Nick only has two prizes remaining at this point. And the Suicune GX, Let's see, has Phantom Winds once during your turn. If this Pokemon is your bench, you may shuffle it and all cards attached to it in your deck. And then Cure Stream. During your opponent's next turn, the defending Pokemon's attacks do 30 less damage. And Brinicles GX, which is Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. Interesting stuff here. Looks like Justin is able to get a Swamper into play, but I'm worried that this is just too little too late on Justin's side. He's got the Meganium as well, so he might be getting a Meganium into play this turn too, but I don't, he does have the Meganium, he has the Meganium and the Swampert, so he's got both. But at this point, Nick has done so much on his board. He's got a Super Scoop Up, which fails also. Uh, he really wants to get that Swampert out of the active position so that he can put the Vulpix active and Beacon. He needs to do that. And he could bench the Mudkip again so that he could evolve into Swampert again next turn. 
But at this point, uh, Nick only needs to take two more knockouts. He's got 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 210 damage on board. And free retreat with Zorora. I don't think there's any way that Justin can possibly stop him. Goes and gets a Chikorita and a Tapu Lele out of his bench. I mean, he would have to have no energy in deck and no energy in hand. Nick would have to have no energy in deck, no energy in hand for Justin to be able to Guzma stall him. And I don't think that that is even a possibility. Uh, Vika Ray is just made entirely of energy and with that Zorora there on the bench, it means that guzma the Vika Volt, is not really even an option. We do see Nick continue to be aggressive with his attachments with that Vika Volt, though, continuing to just throw tons of energy into play. So not really concerned about maybe saving a Lightning Energy for somewhere or saving uh, maybe just some energy in deck. It's not looking like... Uh, you know, not looking like he's going to deck out. He's got plenty of cards in that deck still. Just going for the Cynthia, refreshing his hand, and going to prepare his hand for what he hopes is going to be the game-winning turn on his following turn. Probably going to take the knockout here. Oh, with a Faramosa, he opts to. Keep his Rayquazas safe on the bench there. The Faramosa also has free retreat, so there shouldn't be any sort of issues. Even if he were to get, like, Articuno GX'd, he can retreat for free with the Faramosa. Faramosa. So no problems there. Let's see. He will put a second Meganium into play. So Justin does have two Meganiums now. We'll use Meganium's ability to get the Swampert into play, which would allow him to power draw. But unless there is something that Justin has in his deck that is immune to all of the attackers that Nick has. I mean, maybe the Shuckle, right? Uh, the Shuckle. But the Shuckle's not going to work because all of Nick's attackers have three energy on them. That's not going to cut it. And Justin extends the hand. A quick game there. Nick's deck just teed off and was able to overwhelm Justin's board. Poor Justin, not able to stabilize in the least with that cool Rhyperior deck. So really wanted to see that Rhyperior get in some action there. I'm going to see if I could pull up the Rhyperior on the Rhyperior card on the screen here. Rhyperior. I, to be honest, guys, don't really know how to spell Rhyperior either. I apparently got it right, though, on my first try here on Google. I am so impressed with myself. Rhyperior is such a weird dude to spell. All right, Rhyperior has an ability, Toppling Wind. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may discard the top three cards of your opponent's deck. So he was looking to get this guy into play here. Let's see. Uh, it's not allowing me. Thank you, Oxella Sun, for the bits. I appreciate it. Where are you road tripping, Oxella Sun? Where are you headed? So let me know where you're going to. How much time you got left in the car, my guy? That uh, glad we are able to provide some sort of entertainment here for you. Yeah, I'm having issues trying to drag the Rhyperior onto the screen. Anyways, you guys can look it up. It is, uh, it's got that ability, toppling win. I don't think that Justin ever planned on using the Rock Wrecker attack. Probably not. Yeah, the toppling wind is the main idea there. And then, of course, Charizard GX, which famously mills the top 10 cards of your opponent's deck. Crazy, crazy stuff there with the Charizard GX, if you can get the Charizard GX into play. Now, I'm interested to hear from Justin later how this deck is, like, how are you supposed to keep your opponent from uh, winning the game? How are you supposed to keep your opponent from just taking six prizes very quickly? Is there any sort of wall? I did see a, uh, a single... Shuckle in Justin's deck. I'm not exactly sure what the Suicune GX was supposed to be doing, though. So that is an interesting inclusion. I look forward to hearing from again. All right. So Natalie says, open more packs. We can head on over to PTCGO and get it cracking, my guys. Yes, we are going to do that so that we can have some things to do until the next round is up. All right, let's uh, let's do some stuff on PTCGO here. Rocking and rolling. What do we got? Got three packs of Lost Thunder. Hmm, we might just play a game. I don't know. We can find some packs. Let's see. Let's go to the old shoppy shop. Yeah, shop. 
Suicune is so you don't deck yourself out. Okay. So Suicune's got an ability that throws itself from play into the deck. That's really creative. I like it. Very cool. And let's see what we got here. Booster packs. Oh, booster packs. Who here is excited for tag team? I'm excited for tag team. That is going to be a lot of fun. We can buy one pack. That's what I got. One pack. All right. We're getting... Uh, we're going to get Undaunted. I'm going to get Undaunted. I haven't opened Undaunted. All right, that's all I can afford for now, guys. Then i got to play some games. <laughs> Justin apologizes for his deck not putting on a show. Oh, tell Justin that's okay. That's fine. We forgive Justin. He did his best. Did a very good job. So no qualms with that. He's playing a very convoluted deck. To be honest, I would have been very surprised if it worked. But... He did get it to start to work. It was just too little, too late. And, of course, Vika Ray is just such an aggressive deck that he couldn't quite keep pace. So no one is blaming him for that. And kudos to Justin for trying something new. All right, we got a Darkness Energy here. Very cool. We also got a Haunch Crow. And, ooh, we got a Kyogre Groudon Legend piece. Pretty sick card. Awesome stuff here. I don't know if I have the other half on PTCGO, but awesome to have that piece there. Fantastic stuff. And let's head on over. I can uh, I can play a game here on PTCGO while we wait. So we'll just do that while we wait for the next round of our tournament to come up. And I'm just rocking Bliss Eflon, guys. Yeah, we're just going to do a little, a little cake pop action going on right now until... I see that everybody is ready for round two. See who we got here on PTCGO. Still love Placephalon, honestly. I'm not exactly sure how the deck's going to hold up with the next set. I'm really excited to dig into Tag Team, though, and figure out what archetypes get a boost, which archetypes will get nerfed with Tag Team, and so on and so forth. Looks like we might have a mirror here. So that should be, oh, a very fun and interactive uh, matchup here. JMU boy, of course, will gladly show off the list. It should be in my most recent uh, Blacephalon, um, probably my most recent Blacephalon video on Mahone's Tricky Gym. But if you just hang tight after this game, I will gladly show it off as well. I do start with the turn one Marshadow. Unfortunately, I don't have the uh, Blacephalon in the active position, but that's okay. Yo, Dalton, I ended up playing Blastoise. I got top 128. I was in a win and in situation to get into day two, and I lost to Zora Garbador. It was very close. Came down to the final play of the game. Very, very close series there. Went 5-2-2, uh, two and two, so... Good showing overall. I was excited about the list. I thought the list was good. I also have considered playing Lysander Labs in my Blacephalon deck. I think there are a lot of Pokemon tools that kind of you don't like to see, especially in that white Curum deck, right? The Wishful Batons can be very annoying. Also, Choice Bands on Zoroarks can be annoying as well, even though... It doesn't really matter because if Zorark is taking a one-hit knockout on you, they are probably also going to have that Devoured Field in play, which means that they have countered the Lysander Labs, right? So, interesting inclusion there. I've definitely thought about Lysander Labs. I don't think it's ultimately worth it. I've also considered running the Giraffe Rig in this deck so that you can throw Magikarps into the Lost Zone. If your opponent is playing Zorark Gyarados, I also have considered playing uh, Lysander Prism Star so that you can throw, hmm, I think we're going to go Heat Factory first just because we can't necessarily guarantee that, whoa, what a interesting hand we have here. <laughs> Alrighty then. I think we, huh, yeah, we're just going to end up eye-opening, I think. Uh, so we'll attach our fire here and just let loose my opponent to four. And hopefully we draw into a uh, supporter card. That's what we want. We do have an Ultra Ball and a Naganadel. So I think here we just go Ultra Ball, probably 
Let's see. If we could retreat the active next turn and potentially attack with energy switch. So I think I'd get rid of the Naginadel and the fire energy. The energy switch could be good because I could potentially get like, I don't know, I could, I could do some stuff. I like it. All right, so let's go get ourselves a Lele. A Lele? Oh, no. My, <laughs> my Lele is prized. Oh, all righty then. Okay, so Lele is prized. That means plan number two. All right, that means we're going let loose numero dos. All right, I did throw the second Marshadow into the deck. I think that it could be good. I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll see. So, here we go, we're letting it rip again, and we got Guzma and Blacephalon. Yikes, and I have my own Heat Factory also. I think at this point we probably just sit. At least I have a Fire Energy so that I can Heat Factory next turn. I don't think that there's really much point in using the um, Guzma. I mean, I don't know, I could bring up something else and then you know save my Poipo with the Energy on it. I don't think that that's super worth it. I mean, I could protect the Poipo, maybe send a Marshadow up. I might like that more, though, you know, because then my opponent kind of, no, they'll probably just GX. I'll save the Guzma. We'll just Eye Opener, so we're going to do that. Let's go here. All right, we got Fire, Fire, Sophocles, Sophocles, Lele. All righty then. So we got two Sophocles. Yup, Gucci, Lele's up here. Fire's there, Sophocles. All right, good. That uh, sounds fine. I know, right? You're right, Otto. That happens sometimes. Really wanted to get the Tapu Lele off of the first let loose there. Nobody likes to let loose twice on the first turn. That feels really bad. Usually you want to save that for like a game-winning play later in the game or something like that. You really don't want to also just allocate so much bench space to these guys early on. Not where you want to be, but it's fine. We'll be okay. My opponent's probably going to come up, and if they... Honestly, I would rather them uh, GX. They'll probably GX, though. Uh, I think I'm in a worse spot if they actually mind blown, and I think that that's like kind of a key thing to do early on, is like especially in this power position where he is, he can afford to mind blown me right now. Like he can afford to knock out my Poiple, make it so that I just have one Poiple uh, in, uh, <laughs> one Poiple in play. I know Crunchmeister, I didn't have the, I didn't have an option though. I did not have an option to, I had to use Let Loose. My opening hand was absolute garbage with like, you know, a bunch of B strings in it. So. I feel you, Tama Drummer, I feel you, but what would, you know, honestly, I don't think that that 10 damage, 20 damage, whatever, would make any difference on this Naginadel on the active. Either way, I have to discard 3 energy or Lost Zone 3 energy off of Blacephalon, or I one-hit KO it with a turning point. Like, you know, either way, I don't think it makes any any difference there. I do like Eye Opener um, just to help you, like, kind of burst GX the energy. That way you do get, like, to maximize that. Right? So I like that, but you know, they both kind of have their arguments as for their usefulness. You also get to peck. That's a, that's pretty cool, right? Peck is rad. You can get some things in there with peck. You can knock out Natus with peck. That uh, is something that it does, right? Yes, that's what I'm saying. You peck Chim, uh, Chime Echo and also Natu which is a potentially big deal. We'll see, does my opponent go for the GX or do they go for the knockout here? Yeah, they go for the knockout. Definitely the correct play, the go for the knockout. I like that. They really weaken my board position and can just save the GX attack for later. They don't need to do anything other than what they just did. So very good. Uh, this is kind of a dangerous play for me. I am in a very bad spot. I think I need to Guzma up this Blacephalon uh, and GX. That's just where we're at right now. Nothing else really that I can do. So we'll just uh, promote that point bull, sure. And then I think I'm in Guzma GX town. That sounds great. So this is a tough call. Do I actually heat factory and say, you know what, I kind of need to draw into another energy? I don't think I do. I think I just, yeah. I think I try to heat factory later maybe. Uh, I don't Guzma yet. I need to actually bench this guy. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so we'll Guzma up this dude. 
And it puts my opponent in a little bit of a weird spot because he's got two retreats, so he can't actually just get himself out of it super easily. And then I definitely want to evolve here. We definitely want to charge up. I mean, obviously we're in a great spot if we just get ourselves uh, an energy off of the, you know what? Well, we're definitely losing this game. Let's see, because I'm gonna pick an energy. Yeah, we're definitely losing this game if I don't draw fire, but that's fine. Ooh, well, all right, so that was uh, that was almost really bad, guys. But we got the energy switch, <laughs> just like not how we wanted to do this, but that's fine, I guess. I'd like to move the energy to that guy. All right, very good, thank you. And then I don't want to really bench another GX Pokemon, but I kind of have to Ultra Ball for something here. Thinking that I Ultra Ball away this plus seven, that's just, it's all bad. All right, guys, it's all bad. We're probably just gonna, yeah, bad, bad, bad. There we go. All right, there was an energy here, so we're gonna get that energy. What's up, Cuddly Honey Badger? Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for joining us. We are going to be getting back to the Full Grip Games tournament here shortly, but round one was a little bit of a blowout. So, unfortunately, not much of a game to show off there, and I am just uh, going to fill the time with some PTCGO action. So, thank you guys for hanging out. Appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, thank you for checking out the stream. The stream. This mirror, Blacephalon mirror, is going a little bit sketch. Not going to lie. My opponent's got three Naginadal out to my one. They lilied, so I do know that they are not going to be Guzming this turn, which is good. Uh, if they have Energy Switch plays this turn, that's going to be bad. Oh, that's awesome, Cuddly Honey Badger. That's great. League Challenge starting today. Awesome. Good stuff. Well, welcome to the Pokemon Trading Card Game. Thank you for joining this awesome game that we have. Really excited. Excited that the game is still growing and new players are signing up every day. Awesome stuff. I mean, really, uh, you know, having played a bunch of different trading card games at this point, uh, you know, I've played uh, Magic, I've played Pokemon, I've dipped into Keyforge as well. I can say, you know, with confidence, the Pokemon is a very, very fun trading card game. So, awesome stuff. Good stuff here. Let's see, my opponent's setting up their board, looking very strong. And let's see, they're gonna get an energy there. Now is the time for them to GX. They'll go to two prizes remaining, uh, or four prizes remaining, have taken two prizes. I really then want to see a, you know, I wanna see some B strings, right? But they're just gonna bursting burn. So that's interesting. Okay, if I top deck into some things, I could uh, make some plays, all right. However, we did not, oh yeah. All right, so we have to like, just go for our own, G like we've already GX, we have to go for our own bursting burn. I don't think that there's any other way around this. It's just bad, but then my opponent could just retreat and knock me out. This is like just really, really bad. No matter which way we cut it, this is not good. I'm not drawing out of this at all. So, I mean, we definitely are charging up here. That's for sure. And then, I mean, if we, we just needed to like top deck an energy or something so that I could just attempt mind blown, for, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I could at least attempt it. But with Bursting Burn is my only option, we're feeling really bad. I still don't think it's correct to bench this Blacephalon yet because then my opponent can just goose mother way out of this. So this is just uh, completely bad. All right, Bursting Burn, let's go. Tails, oh, really bad. Now they only need the Lost Zone 3 energy. We like for sure are out of this one, for sure. <laughs> oh no, that's fine though. You know what, it happens. It's all good. Probably gonna, oh, you guys like my, my character's haircut by the way? Do you see that, my tune? It's got a nice little haircut. Used to have the long shaggy hair just like I used to in real life, but that is uh, out of date. I don't look like that anymore. So we updated my tune, stoked on that. Been playing a lot of Tony Hawk Pro Skater as well. Really excited about that. Natalie got me Tony Hawk's, uh, let's see, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4 and Tony Hawk's American Wasteland for Christmas. So really excited about that. I got, also I own Tony Hawk's Underground and Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3. They're some of my favorite games ever made. I really like them, love playing those games. So got to play that 
on Christmas all day yesterday, just posted up on the couch playing some Tony Hawk. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I used the create a skater, um, you know, uh, option on Tony Hawk Pro Skater to create Misty. So I got to ride around with Misty there on the GameCube and just uh, do some tricks and stuff. So that was awesome. And I'm thinking about, like, I don't know, trying to stream it one night. So, like, I think that would be a lot of fun. And it would be a lot of fun for me. I don't know if anybody would watch it. But, like, I figure you just go in there and try to bust out, like, million point combos and just see how many people want to check it out while I'm streaming. So I think that could be fun. We'll see what our top deck is here. I'm thinking this is just a no-go. I already have both Marshadows. Uh, my Lele was prized. This is disastrous. Probably not going to work out. But, you know, I mean, you never know until you try. We'll see how it goes here. Uh, yep, and we do have a beast ring. Oh my goodness, only one beast ring. I think we just concede, right? Like, that's it. I mean, I can do 150 to this thing. Yeah, I'm out. Good game. Well played, sir. You got me. Sorry. So, that was, uh, that was definitely a bust, but it's all good. How do you feel about the Shedinja in Blacephalon? I think it's cute. I think it might be a little bit too cute. I think if your duck is running hot enough, then it doesn't really matter uh, if you got like a 1-1 line. Like I started out playing the um, Zeb Stryka in the Blacephalon deck, and I didn't end up even needing that. Zeb Stryka seems like really good with a Ditto Prism Star, right? You just can like draw through your deck and a whole bunch of stuff. All right, perfect timing because... We got round two coming right up here, Natalie. Who do we got in round two? Okay. Um, we have Will. Will Mantho yeah, on Pra. the right and Zach Pra on the left. All right. So they're what both is... Oh, they're both 1-0. Excellent. Do we know what Will is playing? Uh, Will is playing a Buzz Shrine deck. I'm not sure what. Oh, some sort of... of what variety, and I believe Zach is playing Placephalon. Ah, Zach does love Placephalon. We know this about Zach. Uh, congrats to Zach. Also, by the way, he's going to be getting married here soon, so very excited for him in that regard. Awesome stuff. Let's see. Zach Pra, right? It is Zach Pra, right? Yep. That, there you go. Zach Got Pra it. and Will Mantho. All right. Thank you, Natalie. Appreciate oh. it. All right, Will Mantho. But yes, I am, uh, you know, I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna I'm gonna try the, I am. I am gonna try the, uh, <laughs> uh, the Tony Hawk Pro Skater streams. We're gonna see how those work out. I don't think that I'll get any of you. I think I might have like maybe, even if I could get 20 people to watch me play Tony Hawk Pro Skater, like I'm, I'm set. Like I think we would just have a lot of fun doing that. Of course I will always play Pokemon trading card game, but you know, sometimes you just need to, uh, you know, do some, uh, do some tricks on Tony Hawk Pro Skater. I think it'd be a lot of fun. So, what's up, Dadizard? Welcome. All right, here we go to the match. We got Zach on the left, Will Mantho on the right. Will is playing a Buzz Shrine deck. Zach playing Blacephalon. Will's Buzz Shrine deck uh, should be pretty good against Zach's Blacephalon deck, assuming that he is uh, playing, of course, Blacephalon. But Zach's Naganadel should be able to just trade very favorably with both Buzzwolves and Garbiters, right? That's what I'm saying, Dad is I want to be a variety streamer, right? Yeah, I think a variety streamer. Open my open my doors a little bit, you know, maybe allow for some new and different crowds. I think that would be a lot of fun. There aren't many games that I am very good at. I would say that I qualify as at least good enough at the Pokemon trading card game. And, uh, you know, I got some accolades to back that up. And then I also, I think that I'm pretty good at Mario Kart. I am pretty good at Mario Kart. I think I'm at least good enough to be a streamer at Mario Kart. Uh, though I'm not like, you know, on all these games, there's like that that next level, right? There's like that next level that I, I have not quite at. Like I'm at that next level in the Pokemon trading card game, you know, competing worlds, all that. That's that's fine. But to get that next level in like a second game is like really hard. So I'm like pretty good at Mario Kart. I'm like pretty good at Tony Hawk Pro Skater. But then if you get into like the speed run communities of like Tony Hawk Pro Skater is like completely insane, right? Like these guys are just nuts. Like can beat the game in under 10 minutes, like absolutely crazy. Um, and then uh, if you get into like the the speed run, you know, the speed, uh, the speed run guys in like Mario Kart, you know, they're absolutely insane as well. So anyways, you know, I don't know. I would like to do some more variety stream though. So we'll, we'll think about it and we'll get there. 
All right, players are getting set up now for their match. JMU boy, I do play. Uh, I do play Super Smash Brothers. I play casually. I'm like pretty good, but I'm not great. I'm probably not good enough to stream. <laughs> like that's uh, uh, I'm like good enough to play with my friends, but and like steal some games off them with Lucas. But I only play as Lucas. <laughs> So that will be an immediate problem if you ever want to watch me play <laughs> uh, Smash Brothers on stream. Yeah, you probably don't want to watch me play Smash. I'm pretty good, but not, not good enough. That's like a very serious competitive game, you know. So I don't think I could quite do uh, could quite do Smash. I think Lost March, Tom and Drummer, I think Lost March is a fine deck. I think if you are comfortable with it, go ahead and run it at a League Challenge. It's in a fine place right now. I think it's a deck where if you just if you run hot, you're going to do very well. So just hope you run hot. Hope the deck cooperates, does everything you want it to do, and should be no problem for you. Players are both 1-0 waiting to get ready to start here. Uh, for the second round of the Full Grip Games Tournament, we got Will Mantho is uh, going to be joining us tomorrow night for our Key Forge night here at Full Grip Games as well. Last week we got a dozen players for Key Forge, so that's very exciting. Uh, I like, I do like Key Forge as well. So Key Forge might be that other game that I'm able to get into. I am, uh, I am good at Key Forge, and Key Forge hasn't been around that long, so I feel like it's been. Kind of an easy game for me to wrap my mind around. All right, so it looks like Zach is going to be on the draw here, starting off with the Poifel. He is playing that Blacephalon. Uh, that I suspected that he was playing. Starts Poipo, which is a perfect start against Will's deck here. Uh, going to be playing cards like Shrine of Punishment, trying to take advantage of Pokemon GX. So we got to hope that Zach doesn't have to bench a Tapu Lele. That would be bad for him. He grabs the Let Loose Marshadow, plays no cards from his hand, and let's loose. So, Zach, I know, a lover of the early Let Loose here, always going for that uh, early Let Loose. That could be devastating for Will, though. Will does have the Oranguru in play, which will allow him to kind of stabilize his board if he doesn't draw a supporter card. So he should be able to at least draw a couple extra cards with that Oranguru off of this Let Loose. But I'm also concerned for Zach. Zach wants to hit a supporter card here. If Zach does not hit a supporter card, it could be pretty disastrous. Say Will draws into something like a Lily early on, and Zach just draws a hand with like two Beast Ring and a couple Fire Energy, then Zach is going to be having a bad time. So let's see, how do these players draw off of the Let Loose? Zach gets his hand of four. If he gets a supporter card, he's going to be cruising and having no problems at all. I do see a Fire Energy, which he allocates to the active Poiple, and a pass. So Zach draws completely dead off of the Let Loose. Will's got three basic or three basic Pokemon on his bench now. Uh, he's got two cards left in hand, trying to figure out how to play these cards before his uh, instruct. He's going to instruct for two, and he gets the Lily and a Nest Ball. I was saying this before. I really think that Zach's option to go for the early Let Loose was very, very aggressive and very sketchy. Will draws absolutely nuts off of the four here. He's got all the Pokemon on his bench that he could possibly want, and he is going to be Lilying for seven cards. So the hand advantage is going to be completely insane for Will here. He goes and grabs the Trubbish, so now he has the entire squad out. He's got Sneasel, he's got Slugma, which can evolve into Marcargo. He's got the Trubbish and a Garbodor with an energy on it. All he needs is this troublesome Oranguru out of the active position. Will has got Guzma in hand, so he will be able to target down whoever he wants next time. He also has another Nest Ball in case he wants to fill that bench out potentially with another basic Pokemon. Ups to play the Nest Ball, going to search out another Pokemon, probably looking for Diancie if I had to guess, to boost that Garbodor's early damage output. He could also go for a Trubbish or another Weavile. Looks like he's going to go for Sneasel here so that he can get maybe another Weavile into play. The uh, Weavile should be pretty good against Zack's deck. Uh, he already has the Marshadow, and if Zack tries to adopt a strategy where he just 
goes for four Naginado, Will is going to punish him for that. So that is going to be very bad for Zach. Zach is uh, already looking like he's in a tough spot. He does have the Naginado in hand. He also uh, has a fire energy. So he's going to be able to turning point for 80 damage. But Will has the Guzma. We already know this. So he's going to be able to bring up that Marshadow, do a little bit of damage to it. Now the question is, does Will have an energy? He could knock out the Marshadow with Weavile there if he had an energy, but I don't think he does. He does not have that unit energy. So he might have to go in with Garbodor and I don't, or with, uh, with the Buzzwall. And that Buzzwall is not gonna take a knockout on that Marshadow. So he's just in a tough spot. If Will goes for a draw supporter like a judge, he gives Zack a new hand. That's the last thing Will wants to do in a situation like that. So we see Will opt to Ultra Ball away. The judge leaving Rescue Stretcher and I think a Guzma in his hand. Gonna get the Magcargo. That way he's going to be able to instruct into whatever card he wants. He's using that smooth over now. Gonna stack a card on top of his deck. I gotta imagine that it's going to be a unit energy so that he can play the Guzma, instruct for one, and knock out the Marshadow with Weavile. That would be an excellent play. I'm sure Will sees it. Hitting the Guzma, brings up the Weavile, and he's going to instruct into the energy. Great play there by Will, really taking it to Zach here. Zach's turning point is not going to be able to knock out that Weavile with that resistance to Psychic as well. So Zach is on the draw. If he doesn't have it here, he's gonna be in a very tough spot. We see Zach has Guzma, Zach has a energy switch and a fire. That is it. He is gonna Guzma up the Buzzwell. That's a good play for Zach. He gets to draw another card off his prize here. And Will actually doesn't have a great way to knock out this lone Naginadel. And we see that Zach did get a Sophocles there off of the prize. So he's got a supporter for next turn. The question is, are there enough items in Zach's discard pile for Will to be able to knock this thing out with Garbodor? I don't think there are. So Will may have to get himself into a situation where he just hits the Naginadel for 50. Not what he wants, but probably what he's going to have to settle for. And that's fine, really. I mean, Will's not taking a knockout on Zach. Zach probably won't be able to take a knockout on Will this turn either. Though, Zach does have four energy on the active Naginadel, so that is quite the energy bank that he has there. If he can just draw into a Blacephalon or something like that, it's going to be very good for him so that he could just bench Blacephalon, use the GX, and then go down to just four prizes remaining. Now, it may seem a little counterintuitive to actually bench Blacephalon in this matchup. Uh, thank you, Paul Semenko, for the host, by the way. Appreciate it. But uh, it might seem a little counterintuitive for Zach to bench a Blacephalon, but I think he just has to at some point. He's just uh, up against the wall here, and he's going to need to get a bigger Pokemon out into play to soak up a couple hits and also to dish a couple hits out. This Naginadel is not going to be able to take all the knockouts that he needs, especially with the Psychic Resistant Weavile in play. So we do see Will get a Garbodor out, and Zach top decks into a B-string. Just going to Sophocles that hand away, draw four cards, and does he have anything? Looks like that's a tough four cards. I think he might have Ultra Space, potentially to allow him to search out another Poiple, but with 50 damage on it, he has to get another benched Pokemon. So he's either gonna go for Poiple or Blacephalon. If you got a fire energy, I think you just go for Blacephalon and burst GX right now. What's up, Alex Darnell? Welcome to the stream. Thank you for joining us tonight, appreciate it. Uh, so what does Zach get? Does he get a Blacephalon? Uh, he has Beast Ring, but he can't activate B-String yet because Will has not taken two prizes. So I think he's gotta go for the Poiple. He has a Naginadel in hand, but he chooses the chooses the Blacephalon. That's fine. Uh, and he's gonna Mysterious Treasure away a Naginadel for the Poiple. That's a fine play, but it will leave Zach with a zero card hand, I believe. So just purely on the play here, not where you wanna be at all. 
Uh, I think, okay, no, Zach does have a one card hand and it is B string. We know that it's B string. He's got the B string left. So if this Naginate L goes down, Zach will be able to accelerate, I think, right? Yep, he will be able to accelerate onto the Blacephalon. That's just where he's at. Not a great spot, but Zach's not out of the game yet. They are tied in prizes, you know, and that is uh, that is something to be said. Will's got a Rainbow Energies eyeing up in his hand. Uh, he's going to put that onto Garbodor and eye up his next maneuver. I see a Choice Band and also a Professor Kakui in his hand, so he can increase his damage dealt by 20. It's not going to help the Weavile. Uh, he's only got the one ability Pokemon in play, so he's only doing 50 to Naginato. He does not want to three hit KO this Naginato. That could be a bad trade here. So I think we'll see Will. I think he's eyeing up a retreat. He's going to retreat that Weavile into Garbodor, and he's going to take this knockout with Garbodor. I believe that with Professor Kakui, there should be no problems taking the final uh, the final damage here. Will is going to go in and smooth over, make sure he stacks the card that he wants on top of his deck, and he'll probably Kakui into that combination next turn, or this turn. So it's interesting to see, you know, what is he going to grab off of this? He already has all the pieces he needs for knockout. What is he going to grab to stabilize his board position and prepare for the following turn here? No, he doesn't actually use the Kakui. I like that play. He's going to save the Kakui for another turn where he needs it to take a knockout. I like that a lot. And he just gladly will put that card that he wants on top. So I think that he's probably put Beast Ring on top, or Beast Energy. He had to have put Beast Energy on top of his deck to grab with the... Uh, you know, to use with the Buzzwool next turn. That would be a fantastic play. Zach will likely be at four prizes this next turn. And Will will be able to punish him for that with a huge sledgehammer, a beast energy sledgehammer for 180 damage. Uh, will be absolutely fantastic. I mean, he's got Kakui as well. He won't need it if he does have the Beast Energy in deck. He'll just be slugging for 150 damage with the Choice Band there. So that's probably the play he's eyeing up, if I had to guess. Zach is going to evolve into Naginadel that he gets off the top deck. Beast Ring to the Blacephalon, so he's got three energy in play. Not a horrible spot for Zach, but it's also not good. It's not a... Uh, not where he wants to be. He'll lost zone three energy, his only three energy to take his prize. And of course we know that means it's sledgehammer time. Will confidently promotes the buzz wool there. Knows he's got the beast energy on top. Going to be slugging for that 180 damage there. And this should just solidify Will as, uh, as the winner here in this matchup. I do not see... Uh, I do not see Zach being able to come back from this. It's going to be absolutely devastating. He's going to be off of his Beast Ring turn, and he's going to have to promote an energyless Naginadel, which means that Will will be able to sledgehammer back-to-back -back turns for 150 again and again. And we see Zach just uh, shake the hand. I think he's just going to concede. Uh, it's not going to work out here. So I think they're they're talking it through. And is that it? That's it, yeah. Zach concedes, he knows he can't get it, so Will is gonna take those two prizes, and Zach knows that without Beast Ring, there is absolutely zero chance that he wins that game. So, great plays there from Will Mantho with the deck. We actually haven't seen a whole lot of in the current standard format. This is a deck that was just a powerhouse early on in this year's standard, but kind of fell by the wayside as we started to see some more heal intensive decks, as we started to see decks come out that just weren't as weak to Buzzwell Garb Shrine, especially Guardy. Guardy with like some healing in it, kind of tough for that deck to take down. But in an unprepared meta, Buzz Garb Shrine with Weavile can still just be an absolute powerhouse and a force to be reckoned with. So shout out to Will there for a great win and uh, for showcasing a a good deck. I mean, it's just a deck that refuses to go away in standard, and we can see why. Uh, just very, very strong. Promoting non-GX Pokemon every single turn means that it is a very tough task.
to take six prizes against the Buzzwool Shrine deck. So awesome stuff there, Will. I did tell, who was it that I told? I told somebody that I would show off the JMU boy. I said I would show off my Blacephalon list, so I will show off my Blacephalon list here for you if you're still here. If you're still here, you can go ahead and check this out. I have switched back and forth between the third Lily and the second uh, Marshadow. I do like two Marshadow, but you know, three Lily could be good as well. But this is where I'm at, pretty standard. I'm not running choice bands. That's like a thing that I'm kind of about right now on my Blacephalon list. I don't think that you necessarily need uh, choice bands. I think that with 16 fire energy, you just do enough. Just build the deck to be as consistent as possible, and you just have enough energy in that deck in order to pump out those big knockouts against Zoroarks, against Guardies. You're just fine with that. I love the maxed out consistency, just the 4-4 Naganadel, the 4 Mysterious Treasure, 4 Ultra Ball. That's perfect. Ultra Space uh, is definitely a necessity as well. This deck just sets up quick. It hits hard, does everything that you need it to do uh, with no kind of tricks, right? Just the Energy Switch is the closest thing to a trick that we got in this list. The energy switch is just very strong as a two of in the deck means that you have the mobility even off of your B string turn. So if you have a situation where maybe you only have uh, your opponent has two prizes remaining, you have two prizes remaining, you could do something like bench a Blacephalon, energy switch to it, retreat and blow something up for game. That situation happens all the time. Energy switch is just a game winning card in this deck, much like B-String is a game-winning card too. So really, really uh, straightforward list, but I really love the straightforwardness of it. I don't think that, uh, I don't like Sightseer in the deck. I don't think it draws enough cards. Much prefer Lily. And like I said, uh, you could sub the second Marshadow for a third Lily. I'm kind of back and forth between that in my own version of the deck. Oh, we've got Will Mantho coming back here to talk about his deck. Welcome, Will. Hello. All right, so Will, thank you for joining us here yeah. in the studio. So, Buzz Garb Shrine. Why are you playing Buzz Garb Shrine, Will? Because I don't own enough Blacephalons. Oh, because he doesn't have Blacephalons. You know I have Blacephalon. You knew I was going to be here. I asked Natalie. She said you didn't have your deck on you. I don't have my deck on me. No, you should have planned a little further ahead. I, I texted you an hour. <laughs> I texted you like two hours ago. Okay, I need, I need to use your blinds today. Oh, well, funny of you to assume I checked my phone. Yes, <laughs> that is not the way to go. So, anyways, you're 2-0. Do, you know do you know how many rounds this is going to be? Four. Four rounds. Okay. So 2-0 so far, you're doing well. What do you think of Buzz Garb Shrine in current standard format? Well, I don't know because it's really weird because it's really it's really easy to play around, but if decks just aren't ready for it, 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 it just rolls over stuff. Yeah. Now, I was talking about this. When Zach let loose you turn one, I was like, that's like a really dangerous play. Like, if he had the Lele in deck, I would have much preferred to see him just go for a safe supporter card. What was his hand, you know? I know. He just had nothing in a mysterious treasure. So okay. it's like he's choosing between the Marsha. Maybe the Lele was prized. Now, if the Lele is prized, then all right, you know, you don't mm -hmm. have another play. But if the Lele is not prized and you're just going for the let loose, like, I was like, Will could just draw into Lily and have a oh, yeah. fantastic start. <laughs> and sure enough, that's exactly what we saw there. So your deck did mm -hmm. every Thing that you wanted to do. What do you think about that matchup if, say, Zach just sets up the way he wants to? Um, it should, in theory, be favorable for Buzzgarb Shrine because yeah. you play multiple attackers that can do enough damage to a Naga. But, like, if he just, like, doesn't play, if he plays, like, two items and gets up, like, three Nagas, it's really unfavorable for uh, Right. Buzzgarb. Because you need to go in with Weavile. Weavile doesn't get knocked out by a Naganado unless it's on its three price turn. Mm -hmm. So that's really good. And if they're trying to do the strategy where they just set up like three or four Naganados, you obviously can one hit KO that. So mm -hmm. that's very good for you. If they have to bench a Lele or a Marshadow, you can punish that as well with Weavile. And then if they play a bunch of items down, obviously Garbodor is a tank. And we did see that you were able to utilize your Beast energy turns. Crazy, just 180 damage, like yeah. completely nuts. So like. That's, this is still broken and yeah, <laughs> like completely busted. So awesome play there, Will. So is there any deck that you don't want to see with your Buzzgarb Shrine deck? I don't really know what's also 2-0, but I know Justin's playing that stupid combo deck. Oh, mm. you're going to go ahead and call it stupid, Will. I don't know. Yeah, that's a pretty really harsh annoying. language there. It's really annoying. <laughs> uh, okay, so yes, the very annoying, we'll call it the annoying 
uh, deck out deck that's probably not you know something that would be great for you. I don't know if he's got like a lot of super scoop ups and it's, healing. It's an auto loss. Is it an auto loss for you? Like that's not good, mm -hmm. right? And then no. he can just go in and he's got all like a lot of non GX Pokemon. Rhyperior is just discard three. <laughs> <laughs> so all right, so we think you probably don't want to see the Rhyperior deck, but he took a hard loss game one. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Oh, he just drew nothing. Yeah, <laughs> he started with the Rhyhorn and it just oh. like there's a Rhyhorn in the end. <laughs> <laughs> At what point in the history of the Pokemon trading card game has a Rhyhorn been, like, relevant? Uh, 2006, actually. In 2006? In what deck? Uh, anything that played the, the Rhydon. There's a Rhydon? That's good? Yeah. In 2006. It was like a tech, though, right? Yeah, it was a tech. All right. It had an ability? It prevented bench damage. I think. That's it. I okay. Think. All right. But other than that, like, Ride, mm -hmm. Rhydon, Rhyperiod, period, not exactly, <laughs> you know, a meta game. It's know, like a pre-release card. Ever. It was a pre-release card. It's yeah. like, what in the world is that thing doing out there? So, yeah, that didn't go well. Lost to a V-Karay. So you could play against a V-Karay. You mm -hmm. feel okay about that? Yeah, as long as they don't play Lugia. I saw the Shining Lugia in the oh. dude's list. Oh, for sure. <laughs> so you could still win that for sure. Yeah. Uh, it depends on how many Shining Lugia does he play. Can he, like, set up and get them out? Mm -hmm. You never know. So, anyways, awesome stuff, Will. You excited about Keyforge tomorrow? I might not be able to go. No! <laughs> but right, we'll see. That's fine. Okay. Excellent. Well, thank you for joining us, Will. Good luck in your next round. Thank you. Awesome, man. Good so, night. yes, uh, hopefully we'll be seeing you on the final game. Oh, yeah. Finals. we get to see you again. Yes. Oh. Captain Kronk Serial says, play Tony Hawk 2 and play a Spider-Man. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to play either 3 or 4 or Underground so that I can create a character and then I will play as Misty, right? So I could do Tony Hawk Pro Skater as Misty, right? And then I play around as Misty as like in my creative skater. And then that way it's like Pokemon related. So then, you know, nobody could even be mad, right? Because I'll just be like busting out million point combos with Misty and that's like fun and I'll probably be the only person whoever does that and I'll probably be, you know, I like the, it'll get like five viewers and it'll be great. We'll have a little party with like our five viewers watching me play Tony Hawk. but. Uh, I would be happy, though. That would make me happy if I got to play Tony Hawk Pro Skater on stream. So I'm working on it. I got an old, like, TV, and apparently, I don't know, apparently uh, Sean has a capture card. I know we could, like, download an emulator or something like that in order to emulate it through the computer, and then I think, like, you could probably get some sort of converter for a GameCube controller. I play these games on the GameCube, by the way. Yeah, well, you know. I've heard that the PlayStation 1s are a little bit better, but I just have never owned a PlayStation in my life. I was a Nintendo kid, so we got the Nintendo versions. I also want to stream SSX Tricky. That game's a lot of fun. I love SSX Tricky, so I don't know. that uh, The variety stream could be a thing. We could start doing some variety content. BuluCast, does it drop a lot of frames? All right. Thank you, BuluCast. I don't actually know anything about this. I haven't done a lot of research, so appreciate it for the uh, for the input. I will try to do uh, I will try to do just the GameCube, straight GameCube with the capture card then. I think that would be a lot of fun. Um, so I think the, uh, I wish I could create a skater in SSX Tricky, so then I could create a Pokemon themed character, so then I could like tie it in and it's all Pokemon themed, right? So I think that would just be that'd be uh, that'd be a lot of fun for me anyway. So we'll we'll see. Maybe I don't know. Maybe we ex expand the brand a little bit here on Twitch. But you know, on YouTube, it's always going to be uh, it's always going to be the Pokemon, just straight Pokemon card stuff. I think, even though views have been rough out here lately, tell you what, on YouTube, it has been uh, a tough month of December. On YouTube, man, it's just, uh, it's been really hard. Like, some days I just lose subs. Like, that's, I don't even gain subs. I just lose them. I'm like, man, will I ever get a silver sub button? You tell me I could work on this for, like, you know, a decade and never get a silver sub button. It's, uh, you know, it's just like, Bleh, you know, kind of depressing. But we'll get there. Even if I could just hit, like, 50K subs one day, I think that would just be, like, a huge milestone. And I'd be really, really psyched on that. But, uh, you know, I'm almost, the thing is, I'm like, I'm like 39,300 subs on YouTube right now. And that's just like a painful number to look at. You just want to be at like 40K. And then I just like wake up some days and I'm like, oh yeah, great. We lost 20 subs today. So 20, 20 people just looked at my page and were like, you know what? Done with him. Goodbye, Andrew. I do not want to see you on my YouTube anymore. <laughs> I'm just like, no, why'd you do that? 
Oh man, they did have that one day in December where like they deleted all the spam accounts. Like I lost like a hundred subs that day. So that was like a rough day for sure. But it's been, you know, oh well. Yeah, that's just uh, that's just my personal YouTube gripes. Maybe Amazon will make like a nice YouTube competitor one day or something like that, and we'll be able to. Uh, I don't know. Maybe that will be better. But who knows? Anyways, we just out here doing our thing. Yeah, I've heard that Excel Sun. I've heard that uh, December is rough for a lot of people, not just me. So it's all good. I'm not taking it personally. It's just uh, you know, it's just tough. Oh, SoundCloud and Spotify too. It's good to know. Good to know that it's not just me. People are busy and stuff. Like, I get it. I'm busy too. I don't really get to do too much in December. Oh, thank you, Dadizard. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. Appreciate the bits, man. I know. December's just that kind of month. I am excited about Tag Team as well. I know that, like, uh, uh, just the fact that, like, standard format's kind of just in a... Um, you know, standards just in a kind of a eh spot right now. Like a lot of people are kind of, they, you know, you get it. Like, okay, we got our, you know, our five or six decks and they're all just like, uh, you know, they're all good. And the format's actually like pretty healthy. It's just not really going anywhere. There's not really a lot of new flavor kind of being added in late game here with the current standard format. I think, uh, you know, it's kind of settled and found itself. And we're all just kind of anxiously awaiting the new 300 hit point tag team Pokemon. Like, all right, three prize Pokemon. Let's get them out here. Let's see how that interacts with the game. It's going to be a lot of fun, man. J Dog, I appreciate that. Thank you for the encouragement, and thank you guys so much for the support and all that. I I love what I do, and I I love this stuff. Like this, I'm here because I love being here, and because of you guys. But like, uh, you know, it it's it's tough being a content creator. What everybody always says about like content creating, burnout, all that, the stress. It's all true. I mean, that's just that's just true. Like that, you need, you don't really see it. Like. It's hard to see it, like on the outside, I was always like, yeah, being a YouTuber will be like the best thing ever. Uh, and then you actually get in and then it's just like stressful. It's like very stressful all the time. But I love it though. So it's stress that I like welcome into my life. Like that's okay stress because it's it's something that I love. So that's just it. I feel it, Fabes, right? After Sick Boy rotated, yeah, right. The, uh, the format definitely changed a lot with Sycamore rotating. It's been a slower, grindier format for sure. Thank you, Tio, for the sub. Thank you, appreciate it for the uh, the sub there. You rock. Thank you so much, guys, for the support. We are climbing out here on Twitch, though. Tell you what, the Twitch stats are the only stats that get me going like these days. The YouTube stats just like make me want to curl up in a ball and go run away. But the the Twitch stuff, that's that's been really exciting. So thank you guys all for joining me here on the new platform as we venture on to new and other things. And I've got some plans for Twitch. Like I said, starting to do variety contents, like one thing that we can do. Uh, I don't know, like maybe, you know, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Maybe we do some other variety content to help kind of grow the channel a little bit and get it to like that sustainable level where I want it to be. And then also, I, you know, obviously we're already doing tournament streams. So like, I'm really excited about that. Like we do regular tournament streams. I'm really, really stoked on that. I think we're like some of the only Pokemon content creators who could do that here. So I'm really stoked on that. That's just like a regular thing. Every Wednesday we do a tournament stream. So that's awesome stuff. And then also, um, let's see, I got the, the that stuff, uh, da, 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 da. yeah. You know, I don't know. We're going to keep doing it. So we're just going to keep doing our thing. I will probably get into like potentially streaming like other Pokemon related content. Like when Pokemon 2019 comes out, like I might, I might join that crowd a little bit. Right? So like I might get into that whole bandwagon when the new game come, you know, rolls out to see if I can kind of like stretch the channel a little bit and invite some new heads to get in here. Because at this point, like where we're at, the Pokemon trading card game is like so, like it's, it's this big, right? It's just this big. And we have us, you guys, the diehards, the people who love the Pokemon trading card game. Thank you, Joshua Carnell, for the sub. You rock, man. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. 
But the game is like this big. So right now, like if you want to be a Pokemon trading card game content creator, you're just getting in and the game is like this big. And so you can only get like like that many you know viewers you can only like make it that you know that sustainable just because you do it because you love it like that's why we're all here all the pokemon trading card game content creators we do it because we love it we know we ain't gonna like you know it's like barely sustainable so like we do it because we love it so like we have two options we either try to like basically in order to keep doing it you have to try to grow the game to get it to be like here because by growing the game then you grow your potential audience for a pokemon trading card game content so that's kind of where we're at as a channel. So as Tricky Jim grows, we're trying to grow the game in general because the bigger we make the Pokemon trading card game, then uh, the more viewers we can get and the bigger the scene can be and the bigger the tournaments are and the more excitement for the game, right? So that's just where we're at. No, I did not see Pokemon AB on front page. So tell me about that, uh, Datazard. Also, yes, live content is much different than edited content, though I will say, that I think uh, it feels natural for me though because I, uh, I do my edited videos kind of like live videos, if that makes sense, because a lot, of my, a lot of my videos only have a shelf life of about like a week, right? And then they're like out of date. <laughs> so I, I really just like kind of shuttle them out there and I, I just run them very quickly and don't really, you know, don't really get to put a lot of the time and effort that I would like into my edited videos because I need to crank one out every single day. So it's just, uh, it's a lot, right? Though I will say like my top tens, things like that I do on YouTube, that is like painstaking. Those take forever. Uh, the art contest took a long time. A lot of like the edited videos that I make for YouTube where I really take like hours and hours and like edit up every frame and make it look like beautiful and stuff. That stuff takes a long time. I do put a lot of, you know, I got a lot of pride I put into those things that I edit up, especially the top 10s. Like I'm really excited to do a top 10 video for Tag Team GX. I'm gonna be getting my top 10, uh, my top 10 cards from Tag Team up, I think in the next few weeks. So that's gonna be coming up in the next few weeks. I'm gonna dive into Tag Team, figure out which, uh, which cards I think are the best. I'm also going to be doing some Tag Team tabletop action. So stoked on that as well to start showing off Tag Team GX decks. That's gonna be like super rad. And I'm just excited to see how the mechanic just uh, affects the game in general. I think it's going to be awesome, right? So, oh, you're right. Well, I've never met that person, Datazard, so that is, uh, that's cool. But yes, no, I'm kinda, I'm kinda at that, at that state right now where it's either like we need to do one of two things. We either need to grow the game so that our channels can grow or we grow our channels by expanding our horizons and dipping into other games, which can work to grow the game too because you bring gamers from other audiences in to watch Pokemon trading card game related uh, content. So like that's kind of where we're at as a channel. And 2019 is gonna be the year of trying to figure that out. If you look on Twitch and you like look down the line of like what the most popular, you know, channels are or whatever, yeah, apparently, sorry for the, the monologue here, guys, but uh, yeah, our tournament is going to round three here shortly, but apparently our matches are going to time. So, uh, close there. Close. So, uh, it's, it is uh, at that point where, uh, where, like I said, we need, to, we need to grow things, but figuring out how to grow things is tough, but it's, it's fun. So, I am excited about it, too. Right, uh, but like I said, if you're looking at the front page of Twitch or whatever, there's hope for the Pokemon trading card game. If you look like at Magic, right? Like Magic the Gathering obviously came out in like the early 90s. Uh, it's like the biggest trading card game in the world, right? It's super big, obviously like huge. But uh, Magic has like a huge following on Twitch and a huge you know, following as far as like playing the online client. So there's potential there. That means, and so is Hearthstone. Like Hearthstone and Magic the Gathering are both like hugely watched channels. So that's really exciting to see as a Pokemon trading card game content creator that there is kind of like, you know, there is, there is content there, right? 
So when I'm looking at like how do we grow the game, you know, I'm looking at like Hearthstone, I'm looking at like Magic the Gathering, and I'm looking at um, I'm looking at like Star City Games, right? Because really, as like full group games here, I think that's like our goal is to kind of try to uh, establish ourselves in a way that Star City Games has with both the content creation and just like the store to be able to support and grow the game as well. Uh, that is our, that's awesome, right? That's awesome, no, I agree, right? So I think that there is potential here, but part of that, uh, part of growing the game just means that there needs to be like daily content out there for people to consume for the Pokemon trading card game. So that's a goal as well, is just to, uh, is to kind of be that that voice in the community and be part of the, uh, you know, the people just on the ground helping to kind of just make sure that there are enough people out there that know how to play, right? <laughs> As that's going to create more interest in the game as well. So I do have some gripes with the Pokemon Trading Card Game Online client. I think the Pokemon, the company, can do a lot to make that a more, uh, like a better content for players. I think that they should take some hints probably from Hearthstone and from Magic, you know, as far as how their clients run. Three. All right, so monologue over. Let's get into round three. Who do we got here, Natalie? Um, okay, on the uh, right is uh, Nick Baker. All righty then. Do you know what deck Nick Baker is playing? Zoro Gyarados. Nick Baker. And he's playing Zoro Gyarados. He's, awesome. The are these guys both 2-0? Um, yes. yes okay. They are. Sweet. And then on the left, who do we have? We have Tom. I don't know how to say his last name, but I'll spell it for you. Okay. Give me one second here. Player one. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Bradini. Is Brady. that is that's that Brady? Brady. Yes, Brady? Oh, thank you so much, Can Brady. Can you give to this update, Otto? Oh, Brady, you are Austin. the man. Thank Brady, you. where are you at today? Is Brady here? No. Brady, where are you at? Uh, Tom. Tom. And then S W E O. That's it? Yep. Sweet. And they're both 2-0, yeah. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you so much, Natalie. Appreciate it. And thank you, Brady, for gifting that sub to my man, Otto. You rock, Brady. Appreciate it. Miss you this week, man. You know, you would have been running them tables with Blacephalon, so awesome stuff. All right, here we go. Going to switch over to Nick Baker versus Tom Sweo here. Uh, they are going to be playing at 2-0, like I said. Oh, nice, Brady. Sweet. Hope you are enjoying time with your family there for Christmas. Awesome stuff. So these guys both 2-0 looking to become 3-0 uh, in game three of our four-round tournament here at Full Grip Games. I don't, I don't know what deck Tom is playing, but we do know Nick has Zorark Gyarados on his side. This is a deck uh, that won the Harrogate Regional Championships at the hand of Philip, Philip Schultz. Uh, so that is a recent kind of, like I said, this is some new sauce, I guess, to come out of standard format. I said that there wasn't really any new developments in standard. Uh, I guess uh, Philip Schultz proving me wrong here with the Zorark Gyarados deck. Gyarados, a wild inclusion in the Zorark Zoro archetype. One hit KOs Blacephalon, so super tight meta call there for Philip Schultz and Nick. Uh, performing very well with what is probably a similar list, if I had to guess here, at Full Grip today. Interested to see what Tom is playing on his side. But as I was saying about the Pokemon trading card game uh, client, I think that there is a lot they could do. The client has come a long way, I will say. Uh, for anybody who has been with PTCGO for the last like six years, right? Or however long it's been around, uh, the client used to be actually like unplayable. So it was like it used to be so bad, like glitched all the time, had like uh, a whole bunch of different just uh, errors in the coding and it was, it was really bad. But like it's it's much better now. Like it's actually like a real client now. So that that's nice, right? So they do have to make some changes in order to to kind of grow the game. But hopefully they'll get there. Anyways, we see that we are looking at a Zorak mirror here. Tom starts off with two Zeruas and a Ditto Prism Star. Nick Baker starts off with a Zerua in the active, going for an Ultra Ball. He'll probably 
get a Lele for Elm. Yes, looking at Lele for Elm here, going for two Zeruas and a Ditto Prism Star himself. So a strong start here from Nick. Hopefully he's got the hand to back it up. You would like to have a couple Zoroks and maybe even a supporter for next turn would be really excellent to definitely take advantage of going first and what is sure to be a grindy mirror match. Zorok mirror matches are some of the grindiest matches around, especially if both lists are looking like Philip Schultz lists, then this is going to be a grind fest for sure because uh, there's a lot of healing in Philip's list. So I want to say that Nick is probably uh, probably better prepared for the mirror here. Uh, looks like Tom, oh, Tom is playing Zorak Lycanroc though. So that could be bad for Nick since Tom is going to be able to just be aggressive and potentially get an early like a rock. Nick is probably playing Enhanced Hammer from what I saw. I think he's playing Enhanced Hammer in his deck to try and slow Tom down. And then also has a lot of Max Potion, Ace Arola, Healing cards, so on and so forth. And then on Tom's side, he is playing a Judge. So he's got Judge early and is looking to be the aggressor in this matchup. He's going to want to get a jump on Nick with that Lycanroc, and Lycanroc is gonna allow him to be able to take some quick knockouts. Now, Nick could respond to Lycanroc if he can get four Magikarp in the discard pile. Gyarados could do a whopping 200 damage if Nick is able to evolve the Ditto Prism Star into Gyarados and get four Magikarps down in the discard, but that is asking a lot. So we take a look at Tom's hand here. He's just going to pass, and Nick will go in with Timer Ball. So the fate of the Timer Ball, we got one heads. It's really all you need. If you get double tails there, that could be a game-losing scenario there for Nick. So very good. He's got the Zorark. He's got another Timer Ball, and he gets one tails. And what's that second one there? Do we get to see... It must be a heads. All right, because Nick is going into that deck. Going to grab himself another Zorark as well. So very strong pulls here off of that judge for Nick. Now, if Nick does go in and knock out that Zerua on the second turn of the game, we do have to be concerned about maybe a potential counter gain coming from Tom. I'm not sure what Tom's list looks like, but some Zorark Lycanroc lists are playing counter gain so that, uh, so that they can attack with Dangerous Rogue for just one energy. So that is a possibility. Nick is able to find that double colorless energy, gets a quick knockout on the Zerua. Now Tom is on his back foot for sure. He's trying to figure out what he's gonna promote here. Nick up in prizes, got the Zoroarks already, promotes Ditto Prism Star. So, do we have a draw card from Tom? We got Nest Ball coming down. Going to be able to search out a basic Pokemon. But he needs some Zeruas here in order to continue drawing. Some Zoroarks. He needs some Zoroarks here in order to continue drawing. I think if he had a Zorark in his hand, he probably would have just played it down quickly, I'm imagining. So, He's got a Zerua out of his deck, thins his deck a little bit just by one card, but every card matters here. If you're Tom, I think I saw a bunch of unplayable cards though in Tom's hand. So let's see, is there a supporter among them? I see Rescue Stretcher, I see, oh, Kakui for two. Oh, does he have it? No, it's just a pass. Oh, that's horrible. Tom's starting off so far behind now. He gets a Cynthia off of the Kakui, but he can't play it because uh, that that's just it. So uh, I think it's going to be Nick's turn here. I think he's passing. I think that's what we saw, right? All right. So that's it, I believe. It looks like there might be a little confusion here on the table. That or Nick is just trying to eye up his play, trying to figure out what they got going on here. They seem to be at a little bit of a stalemate. But we'll wait for a player to make an action here so we know exactly what's going on. All right. So apparently, no, he did not 
pass. Okay, I don't think so. Yeah, no, Tom didn't pass. It looked like he was passing. It looked like the Kukui turn there was a pass, but I guess not. No, so that's, uh, that's not a pass. He's going to continue taking his turn. Uh, and Tom is going to grab his Sneasel out of his deck as well there. So that gives him an option to really punish Nick here. It's a really cool uh, play from Tom having the Weavile in his deck. Uh, that Weavile has the potential to take some huge one-hit KOs on Nick's board. Uh, Nick already has four Pokemon with abilities in play. So that's incredible there. Nick needs to try and just run Tom off the table. I think Nick really wants to get a Guzma here and another double colorless. If he can't, he will assuredly Guzma up that Sneasel and knock it out. Thank you, Datazard, for the host. Appreciate it, my man. Thank you so much. Now, we have a Gyarados on Nick's side. I've seen him discard at least one Magikarp already. He's got the Choice Band as well and is considering what to do from here. I uh, he could obviously just take a knockout on the active Ditto. That's not bad. And, you know, I mean, there's probably no point in using Guzma there because the Ditto could also evolve into Weavile. They both are threatening Weaviles there. So, you know, doesn't feel bad at all knocking out the Ditto Prism Star. That way he does not have the flexibility. Now, Tom does have an option here to take a one-hit KO on the Zorark and even things out taking them both down to four prizes. He's got the Weavile in hand. Now he just needs an energy. He also has a Zoroark on his bench now, allowing him to stabilize board a little bit and a Cynthia in hand. So he's just going to rescue Stretcher the Zerua back, and then Cynthia for six. I have to imagine you Cynthia for six, and then go for trade. You get to see eight cards, and hopefully one of them is a unit energy so that he can go in and attack with the Weavile. So I don't think he's looking at maybe attaching the double colorless to the Zorark. I don't like that play. I think you go for the Cynthia and hope to hit the unit. Uh, attaching the double colorless to the Zorark just means you're definitely not attacking this turn. So I hope we're going to see a Cynthia here from Tom. Otherwise, I don't really know what his plans are. He would have to hit, now granted, he has to hit a no, he's not getting a knockout on the Zorak. That, uh, that Ditto evolved into Gyarados. The Gyarados doesn't have an ability, so Nick only has three abilities in play, meaning that uh, he can't take a knockout with a Choice Banded Weavile. That play is gone. So he is looking at maybe attaching the Double Colorless to the Zorak, but that's just kind of a feel bad. I think you just go for the two-hit KO with the Weavile at this point. That's really all he has got. Uh, just uh, really tough. Right. No, I agree with you, Otto. I think that was a great play on Nick's part, seeing that the Ditto was a weakness to the potential Weavile, evolving it preemptively, getting that Gyarados out there. Oh, thank you, Idiots are Us, for the bits as well. Appreciate it, my man. Thank you so much. So, Tom is going to dig for that unit energy here. No exciting plays. Not going to be a knockout or anything, but still good to kind of establish a potential two-hit KO if he can find that unit energy. If not, he's going to be in a pretty tough spot. I still think that he's in a bad spot either way, even if he does do 150 damage to this active Zorark, I think what Tom needs to do is build up a Lycanroc. He really needs to get the potential Lycanroc going. Uh, otherwise, it's just not happening. We do see the unit, though. He's got the unit. Now, is Tom going to trade? He's got Judge in his hand. He's going to trade away the Judge. He's got a um, he's got an Ultra Ball and a Rock Ruff. He'll opt to trade away the Lele as well. So he's got a few cards in his hand. Ultra Ball. He's going to Ultra Ball probably for another Zorark. That or he's going to get... Oh, I like this. He's going to get a Lycanroc. Bring up the Lele. Knock that out. 180 damage. Perfect with the Choice Band. I do like this play. I think it's probably the only play that Tom's got right now. He's got to try and even the playing field while he can. So if he goes for that Lycanroc, takes the Lele out the game, and we'll just be able to utilize his Weavile effectively this turn. So great play here from Tom, seeing his out here to take two prizes and even the game up. Great stuff here. That Lycanroc will come down onto the Rock Ruff and activate Bloodthirsty Eyes. Now we have to wonder, is there a way for Tom to be able to pull off a Dangerous Rogue efficiently? So does 
Tom play a counter game? Does Tom play a multi-switch? Is there any kind of way for Tom to even the playing field with a quick dangerous rogue? That's going to be the make it or break it you know, kind of point of this game here. Nick's going to go down to three prizes. He's probably going to take out this Weavile. We have to imagine that that's what he's got his eyes on here. Nick trades away a second Magikarp and a third Magikarp. So that Gyarados now has the possibility to do 180 damage with a Choice Band to a Pokemon GX. It's doing 150 damage with out choice ban double tails on timer ball means he's not going to be searching out that third zorark and right now nick is actually short on damage to take this knockout but i do see a rescue stretcher in his hand so he should be able to get a fifth pokemon into play in order to knock out that weavile he also has ultra ball so that's good as well he can go grab himself another pokemon out of the deck slap it on the bench go on an Odd prize here. It's not what Nick wants to do. I mean, but he kind of has to. Hopefully, you know, for Nick's sake, maybe Tom doesn't evolve up one of those Aruas there on the bench, and Nick might be able to finish the game off with a non GX knockout. But we do see Nick ultra balling away a Guzma. So the Guzma, I think, especially if Nick is going odd prizes here, I think those Guzmas are going to be a hot commodity. Nick is going to definitely want those Guzmas available to him. I think that could be a game-winning card for him. So, uh, what, Andrew casting for Pokemon? Oh, Otto is saying that I could, uh, casting for Pokemon could be a nice end game for me. Maybe Pokemon hire me. Why don't, yeah, Pokemon, please hire me. Look at me, I'm doing a nice job. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, maybe, we'll see. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see, guys, I don't know, we'll see, so. Oh, I'm getting challenged to PTCGO battles here. I'm logged on to PTCGO and someone just uh, challenged me there. So I need to uh, I need to be wary of that. Anyways, let's get back to the game. So we've got uh, Nick Ultra Balling here grabbing a Lele out of his deck. Going to go grab a supporter. And I'm interested to see what supporter he wants uh, from what supporter he wants in the deck right now. I think that the Guzma he Ultra Balled away could be valuable. I think that that is something he might have wanted to hang on to, so I'm interested to see what his thought process is there. But, you know, I think he's just uh, taking the knockout. Oh, so did he Kakui, or how did he? He did Kakui. All right, he didn't bench anything else. He just Kakui to take that knockout on the Weavile. I was going to say, he's only got two, four, six, eight, so he had to do a little bit of extra damage there to get the umph in order to take that knockout. So, let's see, Tom looks like he's whiffing a great ball here. Yeah, so he's gonna play great ball. He's got nothing. So, nothing there uh, to take that uh, there off of that great ball. And it's just gonna shuffle up. Now, Tom needs uh, an energy. He needs to be able to at least put some sort of pressure on that, or he's going to try to like double attach to like a rock. I don't mind that play either. If Tom could just find an energy, I was going to say, if he could just find something to maybe attach to like a rock, that would be pretty good. But he's got just the attachment to Zorark and a let loose. So that's good. Limit Nick's hand. He knows that he's got that Lele preemptively there. So that is a great play from Tom, just to limit what Nick has got going on. You know, with only two Zoroarks in play, he's not going to have a ton of access to his deck. But Tom does need to be a little bit concerned about that Gyarados looming over there. If Nick can get that fourth Magikarp into the discard, that is going to be pretty frightening. Though, I do want to see Tom somehow attack with a like rock. That's obviously the X factor for Tom. I think that Nick plays a ton of healing in his list. He is going to be able to probably bounce this Zorark up. If I had to guess, he's going to be able to bounce the Zorark up with an Acerola after it takes a hit. I think he's going to have that option available to him. And 
that's going to be really tough for Tom to deal with in a Zorak mirror. I think Nick just has more healing at his disposal than Tom does. That choice band's nice, but I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. 150 damage versus 120 here. Both are two-hit KOs. So we see Tom starting to kind of eye up his damage. Look at his hand. He's got an Ultra Ball there. I think I might see an Acer Roll in his hand, though. So that's really good because it's going to allow for Tom to be able to trade with this uh, with the Zorak deck. And like I said, uh, from Nick's side, we see that fourth Zorak get evolved up. So that's really tough for Nick. Uh, Nick is on odd prizes now, meaning that, uh, you know, he doesn't have to take a non-GX knockout in order to win, but he does have that Mars Shadow, so that's good. He will be able to target down the Mars Shadow for a potential game-winning play if he can just pop a one-hit knockout on one of these big Pokemon GX. That would be great. Gasher, I agree with you. Duels uh, commentator is kind of ideal. Obviously, one commentator is cool, but you know, two is better. That way, you can kind of have two people bouncing ideas off of one another. However, dual commentary is just uh, it's tough to pull off, right? I mean, you got to have two people willing to do it, right? Uh, of course, I'm willing to do it, but the channel's not big enough where I can pay someone else to be here. So <laughs> that's. Uh, <laughs> That's just where we're at, you know? This is like the, uh, you know, this is about as high a production as like daily Pokemon content can get right now. It's just, there's not the the viewer, if you guys could get me a thousand viewers, you know, every night, then I can, uh, I'll get you a second commentator for sure. <laughs> like, like, for sure. But right now it's tough to just get people, you know? It's just, uh, it's hard, it's hard doing it, so. That would be a lot of fun, though. I do love, uh, I love a second commentator. The times that I've had two commentators on here has been a lot of fun. So really, really like that. But as it is right now, we're still trying to grow the game. We'll get there one day. So we will, uh, we'll get there one day, yeah, with a second uh, in-person commentator more often. But as it is right now, just the solo dolo endeavor. All right, yes, I am talking about you, Otto. The one time we tagged, he commented, man, that was some fire. Really liked that. That was great. So Nick did get that Acerola rip there off of the uh, off of that Let Loose, and we see him promote the Gyarados. So it's got me wondering: uh, Does he have the four Magikarps there in his discard pile? We see Nick counting up Tom's deck just to see how many cards Tom has left in the deck. Does Nick have all four Magikarps? If he does, this is going to be huge. Um, but if he doesn't, that's fine. Uh, Gyarados has 150 hit points, so that's like a whopping amount of hit points. I think it's 150. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure the Gyarados got 150 hit points. So let me let me check that Gyarados card here. Um, oh, what happened? Did I miss something to that Gyarados? Hmm, what happened here? Is that Gyarados? Oh, did that thing get Guzma out? Like, what, what just happened? How did that thing get in the active position? Anyways, I feel like I missed something. Oh, the Gyarados took a GX knockout. Got it. All right. So that's uh, that's awesome. Sorry, I'm a few turns behind. I was talking about dual commentators, and I got a couple turns behind here. So Nick just needs a Guzma to win the game uh, with a Zorark GX. Just Guzma DCE. He can win on the Marshadow. He's really close. He's got one prize remaining. So that Gyarados just took two crazy prizes there. He's got the double color list. He's putting it on the bench. He's, does he have Guzma? He's got a choice band there. Does he have it? I don't think he does. He's got the four magic card for the discard pile. He took that huge one hit KO he wanted to take on a Zorark with the Gyarados the turn previous. So he's gonna let loose to look for a Guzma. I was saying earlier that I think that Nick needed to not Ultra Ball away that Guzma so that it could be his game winning card. Thank you, Joshua Carnell, appreciate the bits. Thank you, my man. I was saying he needed to not Ultra Ball away that Guzma because the Guzma was gonna be his game winning play. So that is, uh, that's what we're looking for, Nick. Uh, Nick needs that Guzma there in order to win the game. If not, it's fine. I mean, Tom still has three prizes left to take. Nick does still have a couple turns here to come out on top. Oh, it's the first card. Nick's got it off of the let loose. He's going to see his other cards, but Nick has got game there on the Mars Shadow. So sick rips there from Nick. He's going to come out on top and take the dub with Zorark Gyarados. So Nick did have a showing off now. He had two outs in order to hit it. He had 
the Lele, and he had uh, the Guzma in deck. So he had both of them as options to pull that game off. Uh, really crazy game there from Nick. All four Magikarps in the discard pile, taking that huge one-hit knockout there on a Zorark GX. Definitely a game-winning play there for Nick. So awesome stuff. And uh, really, really stoked to see a crazy Zorark mirror come out there. Apparently, Tom was just not able to get that Lycanroc online, was not able to get that up and rolling. That would have been a huge boon for Tom there if he was able to take some one-hit knockouts with Lycanroc. But I know that Nick also runs Enhanced Hammer. So, ooh, why am I lagging? I don't know. I'm going to try and shut down some other programs and cut the lag out here. Uh, just to try and get the, uh, let's see, try and get my computer to cooperate a little bit better. So sorry if I'm lagging back home, guys. I'm doing what I can here on my 2011 iMac. We're just, uh, you know, on that budget life right now. So we got, <laughs> we're doing the best we can. Doing the best we can. I just, uh, I, well, I had the P I had PTCGO open, so I have closed PTCGO now. Nick is going to go on to be 3-0 here. So six stuff from Nick with Zora Gyarados there. And I think that just the, uh, the Lycan Rock there didn't work out for Tom. I think that would have been great. But I'm not sure how, how many times in a row he would have been able to attack with it. We did see that Tom did play unit energy. So I don't think that that would have ever been a real valid option for him. Because if he had ever just played down a unit energy onto Lycan Rock in order to try and power it up, Nick could have just punished him right. with the Enhanced Hammer. That would have just came down and really limited him. So Nick able to just stay ahead with a very aggressive Zorark list there. Awesome stuff. And we're going to go into our final yet, round. Yeah, no, I know not yet. Yeah, we're going to go into our final round here at the Full Grip Games Weekly Tournament. Thank you all for joining us here tonight. Been an awesome stream so far. And we've had some exciting games, some very quick games also which have allowed for uh, you know quite a bit of commentary here between <laughs> between the games so great stuff but i really really appreciate the viewership thanks guys looks like we're rocking about 100 right now so stoked on that thank you thank you thank you blandard says new to the tcg played a bit of tcgo how to really start tcgo and irl should i buy some booster packs theme decks order a booster box uh, looks like Natalie's on that. But yeah, no, I definitely uh, agree. I think you just look to buy singles individually, watch content online. And I'm not just trying to talk about my channel here, but no, watch content online, figure out what decks you think are look fun, right? Which decks you think are going to be relevant uh, for at least a few months, right? So that you can like build your deck and then it's going to be relevant for a while. There's a couple decks that kind of fit the bill here. Like Malamar is just a deck that refuses to go away. Gonna be good, right? Malamar, you could just buy the stuff for Malamar and that's just gonna be good probably all the way until Worlds. You could buy the stuff for Gardevoir. That'll be good probably until Worlds. You could buy the stuff for Blacephalon. It'll probably be at least pretty good all the way until Worlds. Those are like three kind of mainstay archetypes in standard format right now and you could just get into either one of them watch a video on it read some articles on it do what you you know look up content on those decks and then uh, figure out how to build them and go from there so oh yeah Zorark yes yeah, so of course you could just buy Zorarks and then you just have like kind of the backbone to any Zorark archetype as well so you got like a bunch of different archetypes that are all just really solid and standard right now and you can just get into one and you know pick your favorite and just go with that so i would suggest just start by getting the cards uh getting the cards online first so try to find an archetype that you can build online and oh grand bull is also super cheap so that's a good point yeah if you're looking for a cheap deck grand bull is like a little complex to play as a newer player but it's definitely uh on the cheap side right so that's pretty cool as well and uh, yeah, so that's it, you know. Check out your local league, see if there's a local scene going on. Contact your league leader, leader, ask like what the average age is of the people that show up to your local league. Ask what like the average, uh, you know, attendance numbers are so that you can get an idea whether or not there's like kind of a live scene in your area, right? 
Oh, Gasher, that's awesome. $61 deck. All right, for a, like a competitive trading card game, to get a competitive deck, 61 bucks, it's not bad at all. I do suggest playing on PTCGO first, though, so just buy codes. So you just start off by just buying codes. Uh, Full Grip Games sells codes, so shout out to fullgripgames.com. You can check those out. Full Grip Games sells online codes. You can just buy them online, build the deck that you want to build by trading codes or trading packs for the cards you want. Don't, like, just rip codes open. I do that sometimes just because I like to, uh, and I have almost all the cards I need, so I don't really need to. Um, but you should uh, just... Go get your codes and then trade them for the cards you want. That's probably the best way to get started. Voscan, I am not a partner yet, but we're waiting. Yes, we are in limbo right now. So we've applied. We should be getting there soon, but we're not quite there yet. We just need to get approved. So they need to watch the channel. Shout out to Twitch. If you're watching my stuff, thank you. Please approve me. Appreciate it. A build Garchomp Lucario or a Lolan Executor. Yes, you can, Captain Crunk. Yes. So those are some decks as well. If you buy a theme deck, they do have some playables in them. The Alolan Executor decks, like that's play the Alolan Executor is playable. So is uh you know Garchomp in that theme deck is playable too. And Polion. Play Empoleon as well. Shout out to Swamp Polion. Alolan Ninetales is a really good card. It's pretty expensive, actually. So no, Voskan. We are going on to our fourth and final round. We are just uh, almost there. We're not quite there yet. So, um, yeah, that's that's about it. So I got into the game. I went to a pre-release. I highly suggest going to a pre-release. If you are looking to get into the Pokemon trading card game, I highly suggest going to a pre-release as your first event. They're really, really uh, a lot of fun. I mean, you can open packs and then you build decks and you're on like more or less the same playing field as everybody else because every, you can only build the deck out of the cards that you open at the pre-release. So I highly suggest that. Just give you an idea of what your local scene is like, meet some people, all that kind of stuff. They're usually very fun, kind of more casual competitive events. They give out a lot of times extra packs to the people who do well. However, uh, you know, it's just pretty simple prizing. Super cool and fun stuff. So that's it, Voskan. Thank you for the good question. I do want to do a video series on Mahone's Tricky Gym on YouTube uh, detailing all of, like, the different levels of, like, how to play, how to get started on PTCGO, how to get started on going to your own tournaments, and all of that. That's, like, a future project, though. That's something that I'm looking to getting into, but not uh, something that I have produced quite yet. So that's on like a 2019 schedule. We're going to get that going in 2019 for sure. So that Mahone's Tricky Gym can just be that resource for new players looking to get into the game. I want Mahone's Tricky Gym just to be like kind of a, a one-stop shop for like learning to play all the way up to world's competitors, like the best place to visit. What do we got, Natalie? Will and Nick. All righty then, uh, we got Will Mantha versus uh, Nick Baker. They're sitting down like right, right now, so just give it a second, I'll be able to tell who's on what side. All righty, and they're both 3-0, right? Yes, they are. Sweet. So I'm actually really excited about this matchup. This should be favorable for Will, I'm thinking, right? Yeah. So with Buzzgarb Shrine, that's got to be tough. I mean, Nick does have a lot of heal options in his deck, so he will be able to... Uh, kind of pop those Zoroarks back up and, and heal them. Uh, but I don't think that Nick's list runs Devoured Field. Nick's de I appreciate Does it? I, uh, I, was his Devoured Field out last game? I don't know. Uh, I, there was a Devoured Field out last game. I think it was his, not... Mm, because if it's if it's Philip Schultz list, Philip Schultz does not oh, play yeah. Devoured Field. So if it is Philip Schultz list, then it doesn't, and that would why, be Why are they sitting down? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you can go ask. Thank you so much, Idiots Are Us, for the bits. Um, let's see. How much Smash Bros. has been going okay, on go. lately? Um, that was after the Wii Battle. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, the uh, Smash setting. Bros. has All been right. lit. Nick and yep. on the other side, and then uh, Will. All right. Thank Here's you, it. Natalie. Appreciate it. Uh, Smash Bros. has been pretty lit lately. I've been playing a lot of Lucas. I played with Will the other day and was smoking him with Lucas. Love Lucas. PK PK Freeze, man. PK Freeze is insane. Dude, they uh they buffed that attack a lot. So that was very exciting. Alrighty then. We got Nick Baker on the left. 
And we're going to have Will Mantho on the right. Should be an exciting finale here to our full grip games tournament Wednesday nights. I'm getting surgery tomorrow, so uh, yeah. Guys, wish me luck, all right? Get surgery on my knee. Should be pretty, you know, straightforward. Uh, but I'm getting my torn meniscus uh, kind of fixed up over there. So make sure to wish me luck for tomorrow morning going under. Uh, surgery is at like 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. So uh, doing that, I'm really excited. My meniscus has been messed up in my knee for like six months, since like July. So it's been a long time. All right, Nick Baker, Will Mantho. Let's go. So I'm excited about that. Uh, may I'm not going to be going to work tomorrow for sure because I'm going to be recovering, but yep. All right, let's go. Let's get it. Got Will Mantho versus Nick Baker. Fourth round of the Full Grip Games tournament here. Let's get it. Thank you guys in the chat for all the encouragement. Looks like, honestly, Nick's hand looks insane. He's got three Zeruas and two Zoraks, I think, just in hand. Uh, that is a wild start. He's got three Zeruas just right off rip. That's great stuff. Uh, we do see a Muck on Nick's side, so that is an option. He could play Muck in order to stop Will from using things like maybe Instruct or Diancy, which could be valuable. However, I think that Will is probably more worried about Gyarados, mm -hmm. if I had to guess. I think that Gyarados could be a major player in this matchup, uh, especially if Gyarados can take multiple knockouts. Uh, why is Will attacking his choice bands to his <laughs> not flipped over Pokemon? Uh, the world may never know. So, anyways, let's get it going here in this final game. Both players, three of both uh, very seasoned local players here. Will got second at a regional championships last year with Buzzwell Lycanroc. So, a proven player kind of coming into his own here on the competitive scene. And Nick has been playing the game forever. So Nick has got a lot of experience as well with the Pokemon trading card game. Will, you better take that hand out from underneath your active, my dude. That could be construed as like, I don't know. That could be weird. I don't know what you're trying to do there, Will. Because what if Will has like, you know, like a bunch of different basic Pokemon in his hand, you know, and then it looks like he's trying to do some sort of sleight of hand stuff. So don't do that. Don't play with your active once you get it out there. It's not a... Uh, yeah, especially if you're on like at an official tournament and all that. Definitely don't do that. I've had I've seen some players get in trouble for like starting things like choice ban and then just being like, oh, I'm just kidding, and then like flipping over a Pokemon instead. So yeah, 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 exactly. There have been players who have done that and gotten in trouble. So definitely don't touch that active. Once you lay it, that active is there. Period. You can't switch it. So that's uh that is a no-go. Both players ready to go here. I'm expecting Will to do well, but I don't know. we got to get a better look at his hand here uh, to see uh, to see how his hand is looking. Honestly, I do see the two choice bands, but other than that, he might not have too much else going on. And we have to wait and see. They extend their hands. We're ready to go. All right, we've got Buzzwall versus Team Zerua over here. Nick's going to go first. That is good for Nick, though. Will will be able to potentially take a knockout on the first turn of the game on a Zerua there, which is great for Will as well. Oh, no. Will's... Oh, is that all he's got? I think Nick doesn't have a supporter and just passed. So uh, he does have a bunch of Zoroarks in his hand, though. So Nick should be able to stabilize next turn. But I think his hand is just a bunch of Zoroarks. I know he's got at least one or two. And that's, like, not bad at all. He's definitely fine with that. Will just has Lily for a few and nothing else. Oh, my gosh. So that is horrible. Nick is going to opt to evolve into Zorark and Timer Ball here. He's got one heads on the Timer Ball as well. Just very strong there. Uh, thank you, Riley, for the two bits. I appreciate it, my man. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so... Nick is gladly going to go grab a second Zorark here, stabilize the board a little bit, and poor Will, not really drawing anything here off of that Lily. Would have loved to have taken a turn one knockout on his Rua, but now he's going to have uh, quite the uphill battle 
Will needs to stabilize his board position. He needs to get some other bench Pokemon. And if there's one thing about uh, Will as a competitive player that I will gladly say is that he's got no poker face whatsoever. If he's mad, you could tell. Uh, so you could tell that he's bad right now. You could tell that he's bad through the stream. You could tell that he's frustrated with the way that he's moving his hands around and revealing cards in his hand to Nick. <laughs> it's just, uh, uh, he's got absolutely zero poker face whatsoever. So uh, Will is looking definitely frustrated on his side and probably letting uh, Nick as well as us know it. <laughs> so uh, obviously not, uh, not you know, not, you know, a mystery as to why he's frustrated. Uh, he's got a single buzzwall against now three Zoroarks, but, you know, definitely you want to try and keep your cool, you know, uh, against your opponent when you're, especially in a tournament setting, you want to try and keep your cool and make it uh, seem like you could maybe have some sort of play up your sleeve, right? You don't want to just go out there just saying, like, this is horrible, this is trash, right? So that's just... Uh, that's just it. Nick has almost got game here. He just needs to Kikui and have a full bench with the double colorless, and that's it. So Will could just lose if Nick draws everything that he needs. We said already Nick does not play Devoured Field, I don't think, but he just needs another basic here. If he goes and grabs Lele, he can Lele for Kikui. He's got three trades to make it happen. I already see the double colorless in his hand, so he could do that. He's got a Magikarp in his hand as well. He just needs to be able to Tapu Lele uh, in order to, let's see, grab that, grab that Kikui. He's going to bench it. Now, does he have, is that a mysterious treasure in his hand? I don't think so. Uh, he's got a choice band. Oh, it is a mysterious treasure. Can he do it? He can go grab the Lele. I think he's going to grab the Lele preemptively, potentially. I don't think that he's traded three times yet. So let's see. He's got the Lele, and he's going to bench it and Wonder Tag for a Kukui. Now Nick just needs one more benched Pokemon in order to pull off game. If he gets an Ultra Ball or just a basic Pokemon, that's it. Yikes. So let's see here. All right, we'll see if Nick has a trade left. I forgot to see how often Nick, Nick has traded. I did not expect him to take the knockout this early. He's got Kakui, and he's got the Oranguru and Double Colorless. That's it. Nick is going to take the tournament 4 0 with Zora Gyarados. Crazy stuff, Hill. Will had nothing. Oh, so crushing. <laughs> oh my gosh. So some quick games here tonight at Full Grip. Two, just two games, like two games went so fast. Unbelievable. Will is out on turn two. He only got to play one turn of that game. Completely crazy. So... All right, guys, make sure to drop an F in the chat for Will, man. Drop an F for your man, Will. Sorry, Will. That was uh, that was no good, man. That was no good. Thank you, Mace, for the sub. Appreciate it, Mace. Welcome to the club here. Welcome to the Discord as well. You can join the sub-only Discord. Make sure to check uh, that out. Because the match is over quick, they're going to play an old deck on stream. I That's think. fine. All right, so... so. Change, I would change the like the, the title so nobody thinks that's part of a tournament. Sure, sure. Just yeah, I could do that. Not the title or just the just the the overlay or something. Change the sure. overlay? Just well like I could hide the records. That's that's fine. That's it. That. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's what I could do. All right, so we're gonna see an old deck battle between uh, Will and Nick. So appreciate that. That's uh awesome. We're gonna get to see a little old deck action from these two guys while we wait for the rest of the tournament to conclude. But Nick Baker is going to be our champion of the Wednesday night full grip games tournament here with 4-0 record uh, with that Zorark Gyarados deck. So crazy stuff there. Super quick win there from Nick. Just throwing down the Oranguru. Had it. Kakui game. Will absolutely devastated there. Thank you, Joshua Carnell. Looks like they're playing 2006. Yes, thanks, Josh. Oh, and this is going to be the first time I think we've ever shown off 2006 on Tricky Gym. I've been wanting to do this. Ewok Chief, welcome to the club. Thank you for subbing, Ewok Chief. You rock. 
Looks like they're going to be showing off some 2006 decks. So let's see what they got going on here. They are still on the good, same sides. That's good. I don't need to switch up my overlay at all. Yeah, I all. know. Otto says we're going to need to explain. Well, you know, we'll do, do our, our best. best. <laughs> you know, people could just see the cards. And, and you know, I will do the best be cool. that I can. The format is complicated. It's I don't know a lot of the cards. It looks like Will is playing LBS. Will's Natalie LBS. Knows, Will loves LBS. Natalie knows more about LBS than I do. And it looks like Nick is maybe playing Metagross. So this Wishing Star, this is Wishing Star Jirachi, right? Yes. Um, uh, the, the first turn rules in 2006 are that the person going first cannot draw a card for their turn, and they cannot play um, supporters. So they can play items in stadiums, but most of the draw and most of the Pokemon start deepened in 2006 was just po supporter-based. And this is super interesting because the Wishing Star Jirachi that Will is using right now is actually coming back to standard format. Yeah, it is. I think, did they change it a little bit? Uh, I think they changed it a little bit. I'm not sure. But uh, the way it reads in 2006 is that you put the Jirachi to sleep. If you do, you can look at your top five of your cards or your deck, put one into your hand, shuffle the rest. So Will is using that Wishing Star ability in order to grab a card off the top of his deck and help him to set up a little uh, more. So what does he want here? Probably wants what a Pokemon mentor. Does yeah, that help he, him set uh, up? Well, he's going first. He can't play Pokemon mentor. Oh, uh, okay. So um, if he can get like a Squirtle or a Pidgey down, that would be pretty cool. He's got the um, so the, well, I'm gonna explain the point of these decks. Um, so Nick is playing Meta Knight, and Will's playing LBS. Looks like Will didn't get anything, but that's okay. Um, so uh, LBS plays Blastoise CX, which does the Rain Dance ability. It attaches a bunch of Water Energy, um, and it does damage. It does ten damage every time you do it. And then um, Lugia EX does like 200 damage for uh, three different types of energy, and you use Holland's Cast Form, which provides two energy uh, when you attach it uh, and remove another energy from the Pokemon. So a lot to, going on. Yeah, so it does a, it, it's a pretty much a combo deck, and it plays um, Pidgeot, which is one of the staple cards in the format that would is it's a stage two, and you can search your deck for any card once a turn. It's pretty crazy. Sure. Um, so we see Nick go in with Celio's Network here, and he's going to grab his own Jirachi. Celio's Network just gets a Pokemon out of the deck, right? Yes, yeah, it just gets any Pokemon. Um, I know one of my one of our friends described 2006 the first time playing it as uh, just a bunch of supporters that get other supporters in Pokemon. But it is, um, a lot of the draw and the search are all po supporter based. Um, and Meta Knight is a deck kind of like Eels, um, and it, it accelerates from the uh, the bench onto the active or the, or it, uh, Metagross accelerates. From the discard pile, uh, right? Or not Metagross, sorry. D Dragon, it's Dragonite and Metagross Delta. Yeah. Dragonite accelerates from the discard pile uh, onto a Pokemon, and then uh, Metagross does uh, damage based on the amount of energy you discard off of it. So it's a lot like an Eels deck or any other energy acceleration deck, but it's all stage twos. Metagross, so you can look at cards and pick one off the top of your deck, that kind of thing. So that's uh, also another good thing about it. You can um, see how much there is uh, like going on with both of these decks. There's, it's why, going on. I, there's why I haven't you know streamed uh, 2006 yet or yeah, tried to record videos because I was worried that I would sound like kind of a babbling idiot trying to do it's that. It's very complicated and there's no way I'm going to be able to explain <laughs> everything that's going on. We're going to so. do our best though. Yeah. So Nick will continue setting up with that wishful uh, star ability there. Looks like Will's Jirachi stays asleep, so that's not what he wants because yeah. he can't actually wishful star while the Jirachi is asleep there. Uh, we do see Will go into his deck, and he's got a Holland's Mentor, so that's actually fantastic. He was able to get that Holland's Mentor out of his deck, which is, you know reads, uh, if you discard a card from your hand, you can go get three basic Pokemon out of your deck. And do they have to have a certain, is there a hit point cap it's on 100 them? HP or less. 100 HP or less. Or you less than 100 get... HP, it's one of those two, I can't remember. Exactly. So he's going to use Hollow's Mentor, go get a Pidgey, a Squirtle, and one other basic out onto his bench. Uh, looks like the Onyx he's going for. Now, what does the Steelix do, Natalie? The Steelix does um 100... 20 snipe anywhere, I believe. Yeah, yeah it snipes like 120 damage. So pretty cool stuff there, but Will is definitely going to be trying to get the Pidgeot into play. The Pidgeot has an ability... That's 100 snipe, sorry. The um, Pidgeot has an ability that allows you to quick search, uh, allows you to search once during your turn for any card out of your deck. So a lot of decks revolved around the Pidgeot engine because once you set up Pidgeot, you then could set your entire deck up. So very strong strategy there incorporated in many 2006 decks. They pretty much all relied on Pidgeot's quick search. And then there's also stadiums that prevent colorless Pokemon's abilities from working, like what, Battle Frontier? Battle Frontier. Yep. yep. So there are combos, there are abilities on Pokemon that prevent uh, colorless Pokemon's abilities, so there is a lot of Pidgeot hate as well. 
which favors some archetypes, you know, and trying to shut that Pidgeot strategy down. So we see here, uh, Nick is just going to get another Beldum. Uh, Beldum's ability is insane. You can flip a coin, uh, and if heads, you get to search your deck for a basic metal Pokemon and put it on the bench. So um, you can just Magnetic Call and Magnetic Call and Magnetic Call if you get a bunch it's of heads. pretty crazy. Um, and there he goes. He's got the four Beldum. And another thing about the 2006 format, and actually a lot of, most of the early um, earlier formats from before Black and White, you could rare candy the first turn you put a basic down. So if... Um, if, say, Will were to bench um, a Squirtle next turn, and he could just wreck Andy immediately into Blastoise. Yep. So we do see Nick go in with the Steven's advice here. Interestingly, we're also getting a card similar to Steven's advice back in standard format as well, right? It's going to be translated in the form of, uh, what, Erica's Meads? Yeah, and it's. I think it's... Isn't it, if you are, can, it's a little different. It's, Again. It reads that you can't have, uh, like, four, you have to have, like, no more than four other cards in your hand. Something like that. Um, Metagross Delta plays Lightning because it has to attack for a Lightning. It attacks for a Lightning and a Metal. And you, um, how many energy you discard, I believe. Yep, so we see uh, Will finally wake up. He's going to get to use Wishing Star himself. And you guys will notice about these uh, old formats, especially 2006, it's a much slower format. Uh, there is no Lysander. There is no Guzma. So there is no just uh, bringing up your opponent's bench Pokemon. So the bench Pokemon are relatively safe. So that's what makes the Pidgeot engine so strong. We see that Will grabs the rare candy off of the Wishing Star, allows him to go and search his deck for anything with Pidgeot's quick search. So then Will is going to search out that other rare candy and get a Blastoise into play. So now he's got Pidgeot and Blastoise. His board position is looking much stronger than it was previously. And we can see how good the uh, Wishing Star Jirachi was to Will's setup here. Will is now going to Steven's advice, which allows him to draw cards equal to the amount of cards that Nick has in play. So Will's going to get just a draw six off of there, looking for an energy. You saw that he switched previously uh, into that Jirachi. If he finds an energy, he can just evolve one of his bench Pokemon. He doesn't even need to now. But he doesn't need to. I don't really know why he switched it. Well, because he, he was needed. asleep and he wanted to burn a card out of oh, his hand. Oh, okay, he was asleep. Um, okay, so if so he wants to retreat fair. now, he could retreat. Yeah. Um, but if he gets like a Slugma down or something, he could just um, use make a wish to evolve it. Right. So uh, interesting stuff there from Will. Do we know is the uh, this version playing the Porygon or is it playing the uh, Slugma and Macarga? Um, I'm not actually sure. It's not my LBS, so I think right. I'm, I'd have to see what Nick put in it. Now we did see Nick go for a Pokemon reversal there. That's interesting. So there was no sort of Lysander or Guzma, like I said, back in 2006. Yeah, it was However, a gentleman's there, game. <laughs> we call it a gentleman's game. It's pretty funny. <laughs> However, there was a Pokemon reversal, which is basically the same thing as a modern Pokemon catcher, where you have to flip a coin. If heads, you can, sur you can uh, pull up one of your opponent's bench Pokemon into the active position. So... Uh, yeah, most decks didn't play Pokemon Reversal back then, though. No. Only a few. Uh, this version of Meta Knight, there's like two different standard versions of Meta Knight. This one is the one that uh, Yuda Komotsuda got uh, fourth place at Worlds with. And then there's another version that plays like Holland Mentor and stuff like that. It plays the Holland Engine. Okay. And uh, a lot of my friends and I prefer this uh, uh, this Magnetic Call version with the, with the Pokemon Reversals. It's a lot more aggressive and it draws a lot more cards. Um, and, uh. you can, and Magnetic Call is just so good. I mean, it's good when you flip heads. Uh, but yeah, but then you flip heads and you get another one and you flip another head, so that's the deal. So we see Nick going in with another Pokemon reversal. That's another Tails. I think that, you know, Nick doesn't seem to be getting too much going on here. He does have one Metagross, so he is starting to accelerate some energy from the discard pile onto his benched Pokemon here. But he's gladly just going to stay in the active and continue trying to use Wishing Star to set up his board. But we see that Will does have the Steelix out. So with Steelix on the board, Will does have the option to be able to snipe Nick's bench Pokemon. So it's not like Will's going to be able to Guzma or Lysander or anything up. However, he can use Steelix's snipe attack to start to pick off Beldums and Dratinis and so on and so forth. So Will will attach and retreat. Uh, he's going to use a Swoop Teleporter, which allows him to discard one of his basic Pokemon 
and switch it with another Pokemon from his deck. He will gladly choose the Slugma. He's already got the Magcargo in his hand. So that's a very good heads up play from Will. And Will is just looking for more draw power here. He switches into the Wishing Star Jirachi. He probably, oh, and he's able to evolve as well with the Swoop Teleporter play because the Pokemon that takes the place of the Pokemon he discarded, it's like that Pokemon's been in play already for a turn. Yes. So really heads up play there it's from like Will. It's like Ninja Boy. It's like Ninja Boy, right? He can stack his deck now with Macargo. You guys all know what Macargo does. It's the same old thing that Macargo does in the current standard format. So Will's going to Mentor, and the cool thing about Mentor is he can go get Holland's Cast Forms. Holland's Cast Form is basically a double rainbow energy as a Pokemon. So what Holland's Cast Form does is it allows you to attach it to a Pokemon, and it counts as two rainbow energy. However, you have to bounce an energy back from the Pokemon you attach Holland's Cast Form to back to your hand in order to play it. So it's a lot going on with that card. There's a lot going on in this deck, uh, really. I mean, it's just a very convoluted deck, the Blastoise deck here. We've got a lot of moving p pieces here. There's the Macargo, there's the Pidgeot, there's the Blastoise. We've got Wishing Star Jirachi in the active. There's a Steelix in play. Uh, a lot more going on in Lugia Blastoise than there is in Nick Baker's Metagross deck, which just tries to set up Metagrosses and then also Dragonites and then attack with both. So we'll see, let's see, Will uh, does have 10 damage on the Macargo. Not exactly sure how that got there. He's probably gonna go in with a quick search if I had to guess and search his deck for something. I don't know if he's quick searched already. He might have quick searched to help get the Swoop Teleporter play uh, out and going on here. He's picking up his deck like he's about to search it, though. So he's going to smooth over. He's going to quick search. I think he's going to quick search for the water. And then he'll do his wishing star here to look at his top five cards of the deck. See if he's got anything in there. Oh, what is he? What is he? Why is he grabbing a second card? Out? Oh, he's probably. Oh, okay. So he's uh, he is doing a. I thought he already grabbed the water. I think hmm. he put it back. Okay, so he wants the water off of the quick search. Very good. And then I guess he put himself to sleep, though, so he's doing the wishing star as well, right? I mean, that's what I'm imagining here. I, but now he's got two waters in hand. So I'm oh, that might have been... I'm ultimately confused about yeah, what Will what just happened. did. <laughs> but uh, that's fine. We're just... Uh, I'm pretty sure he might have just double searched his deck. Not exactly sure why or how he did that. It's all right. Just a fun game. I don't it's know. It's just a fun it game. Been... It might have been the Jirachi's wishing star. Uh, but we do see Will just Will's asking some questions. It looks like right. Can he attach the Magnemite like that? Yes, he can. Okay. It's uh, it doesn't require anything. It's only one. It's only one colorless. It doesn't even provide a rainbow. Sure. It's just so that you can Holland's mentor for yeah. an energy. Yeah, yeah. You can Holland mentor for an energy. That's cool. So that is interesting. Yeah. Will is just going to attach the Magnemite to the active Jirachi, get an energy onto it. Now Nick's going to go for his third Pokemon reversal. All right. Finally he's gets want that ahead. Blastoise, I think. I don't know if he. I think I would bring up the Blastoise here, but maybe he, he might do the Pidgeot. Uh, it looks like he's going for the Blastoise, because uh, Blastoise is weak to Metagross, because Metagross is metal and steel, oh. or metal and bomb. Wishing Star and Macargo. Oh, I get it. Thank yeah. you, Yoshi. I appreciate it. Yes, I was confused. I knew that he was Wishing Star, but Will shortcutted it. As yeah, he, he shortcutted it. He shortcutted it, make it confusing. So I get um, it. Okay, he was stacking his deck with Macargo and then Wishing Star for the second water. I, yeah. got, I got it now. Um, got it. Thank you, Yoshi. Yep. Yoshi in here paying attention. <laughs> um, Blastoise is weak to lightning, and Metagross is a lightning and uh, metal dual type. So he can, uh, Nick can knock out that Blastoise pretty easily. Um, right. Meg Should be bad for Will. I've seen Will already discarded his other Blastoise, so. Yeah, I mean, he's got a lot of ways to get out of the deck, get it out of the deck. Um, Blast, or uh, Metagross does do 30 plus 20 for each energy discarded off the field, so he only needs to do, um, I believe, two energy. Uh, 57, no, 3 energy. But that's so he's knocking this thing out. Yeah, he's knocking this thing out. For two prizes. Yes. So that's awesome. Heads up play here by Nick. Finally getting the reversal he needs to take a big knockout. It's got a special metal energy on it as well, so that Metagross is going to be taking 10 less damage. And he's also using an admin there. So shuffling up Will's deck, he knows that Will had two water energy on you know in his hand the turn previous and a cast form so will had the option to go explosive you know if uh if nick didn't disrupt that hand but at this point will's got no squirtle in play no blastoise in play 
Uh, and he's pretty much a sitting duck, so Will doesn't have too much of anything going on right now. And it's just at the whim of whatever Nick is going to do. Thank you for joining us, JW. Appreciate it. Appreciate the encouragement, my man. Thank you for showing up and joining us tonight here. Shout out to JW, Flex Daddy Righteous. Been doing a little streaming his own here. Will's going to go in with a Holland's Mentor, grab a Squirtle out the deck, as well as a cast form, and I would probably just grab a third Pokemon if you can. Uh, I don't think he can grab that Lugia. Um, I think you can. It's 100 HP. Oh, uh, is it 100 or less? Does yeah. Lugia just have 100 I hit points? Look, but um, the Lugia does only have 100 hit points, which is funny. Oh, so that is funny. He's going to be able to grab that Lugia EX2. Super yes, cool play. Yes, 100 HP or less. So the funny thing about this format is that you could rare candy on the turn you bench things. So if Will, Will can might be able to sort out the find himself, uh, if he can find himself a rare candy Blastoise, he can get that that Squirtle right back up into play. However, he's going to need, what is the, oh, thank you so much, Daz. appreciate it. Awesome stuff. Yeah, we do daily stuff there on YouTube, so appreciate the encouragement and the sub, my man. Uh, Will is going to do the probably the Macargo Wishing Star combo here in order to search deck for the pieces he needs. He gets the Pokemon Retriever there. Pokemon Retriever lets him get the Pokemon out of his discard pile that he wants. He already has a rare candy in his hand. And boom, there goes the Dynamite. He's got Blastoise back in action with a combo of Macargo and Wishing Star. So this is really interesting. Nightblade, I am with you. I have no idea. Yeah. I think it was Make a Wish and then Swoop Teleporter. Okay, so but he used. Yes, 2006 is very confusing. That's why we haven't really done any content on it. We're just having this last game for fun because of uh, right. stream, our, our stream match went really quick. Nightblade, it had to have been that Jirachi that was out previously. There was a Jirachi that Will had in play that allows you to search your deck for an evolution card and go and evolve it, but you have to do 10 damage. That had to have been it. Uh, that or. I guess, oh, no, no, Will Rain Danced onto oh, the... Oh, he Rain Danced onto Oh, yes. so that 10 damage came because Will Rain Danced onto the Pokemon in order to retreat it, and Rain Dance uh, on Blastoise CX does 10 damage to every Pokemon. So it had to have been that. Because yeah, he good. never had an energy he on retreated. that Jirachi. Yeah. Yes. Um, now, if Nick has a fourth uh, Pokemon reversal in his deck, he could bring up that Blastoise and knock it out again. I think if if Nick can knock out another Blastoise, That'd that's just going to be I mean, that's game, just, right? Nick's, de Nick's deck is all non-EXs, so yes. it, you have to knock out, like, six Metagross to win the game. Which, which is, is a yeah, lot. Not yeah. six Metagross, but, um, yeah, that makes a lot of yeah. No, no problem. Yeah, I know it's a lot going on. Even even we have a hard Even time. for us, and we've played, we own these decks, yeah. and we still don't have a firm grasp of it. It's really hard to commentate on a format you're not super familiar with. Right. So and that's uh Not tough. a lot of people know the format, and the cards are very complex, and so are a lot of the interactions. That's why, like, people ask for the 2006 content. We haven't really just we haven't really wanted to do it because of all this. Right, because there's only it's a few cool people who know. pretty cool to show it off right now, know, though. Right, there's only a few people who know what all the cards do. And then, uh, and then there's only, you know, so the audience, the potential audience for 2006 is very small. I think it would require a lot of, like, a, de a video, like, a deck profile of both decks that we show before the hand, which would right. explain every single thing that goes on. So that's why I've really enjoyed doing, like, a lot of base set content and stuff like that, because base set, very easy to explain. Scyther does 30. Hitmonchan does 20. Electabuzz does 10 and Paralyze. It's very, uh, very straightforward for, like, the Haymakers, you know, the base jungle stuff, all that. Super, super straightforward. These 2006 cards, they got a lot of text on them. Yeah, they There's do. just a lot of readers going on over here. And uh, we can see that stump, that giant stump. Pretty sure that just limits each player to four, right? It's three, I believe. Is it three? Oh, it's like Parallel City for both sides? For both sides, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like that. There's just a lot going on. All right, so we see Will uh, rain dance the water and then bump it with the, what is that, a Magneton? Yeah, bump Magneton does the same thing as, as, as Cat's Form. Okay, bump it with the Magneton and then reattach the water with Rain Dance. So he now has three energy on the Lugia. Lugia is going to be able to do 200 damage to that Metagross and knock it out. So Will will take a prize, but at what cost? Yeah, he's but, got, but at what cost, for real? <laughs> uh, he's got uh, an EX in the active position. That thing can go down. Nick's only got three prizes remaining. So it's uh, it's not looking too great. Uh, for Will, I'm pretty concerned about you know Will's board position here. Yeah. Uh, Nick got to start off pretty strong, but Nick doesn't have any energy in play. He will be able to accelerate some into play with his Metagrosses here. He's got a Thank retrieval. 
Uh, so he will be able to bring that uh, – that dude back. Oh, and in the immediate rare candy into oh, Metagross yeah. there. So very responsive play from Nick here. Uh, and the Metagross also, what, allows him to look at the top four cards of his deck? Yes, and pick one. Pick one and yes. put it into his hand? Yes. That's insane. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, oh, it's my one of my gosh. favorite decks. Um, so crazy stuff there. He's got a counter stadium. Truthfully, I don't know what that counter stadium is. It's Holland Ruins. Okay, Holland Ruins. Holland Ruins lets you draw a card if you have a Holland Pokemon in play uh, or a Delta uh, Delta Pokemon to play, and then you can you have to discard a card after. So you use it, you can draw a card, and then discard like a lightning energy. Very cool. Um, All right, so Nick is going to start to accelerate energy from his discard pile to his bench Metagross there with their abilities. And it's probably just going to be a pass turn from Nick, but he doesn't really mind. He could, he could have a switch or anything. I don't, it doesn't look like he does, no. It would be bad if, uh, I think if Will can just go in and maybe, like, snipe one of these things. I don't think he can knock it out. Lugia, uh, the uh, Steelix only does 100 damage to the bench there. Um, the the Metagrosses have uh, 100 HP, so he can snipe them. Oh, the Metagrosses have 100? Yes. Um, but, uh, and the Dragonite? Yosh what does the, the Dragonite have? Yosh in the chat says he needs to snipe, with, snipe the Dragonites. I believe the Dragonite also gets knocked out. Yes. If Will can take a snipe knockout with that Steelix, that's just going to be you know a wrap, probably. That's going to be very good for Will. He could be yeah. aggressive, take out those evolution Pokemon, you need make to put it metals on more the bench Pokemon difficult. to keep them safe in this yes. matchup for Meta Knight. I agree. Thank you, Camper of Death, for the host. Appreciate it, my man. Thank you, thank you. All right, Will going to do that double combo like play again. Yep. Get the energy onto the Steelix there. Promote the Steelix with the cast form and the water energy on it from Rain Dance. And we can see he is damaging his own guys here uh, with that Rain Dance ability. But the Steelix, does the Steelix have to discard in order to attack? Yes, it discards the cast form. Okay, At so the very least, I believe it could even do more. The Steelix uh, is going bit. to have to discard. Bit. Will also has an admin, so he's going to be able to discard two energy. Yep. So yep. Um, it has to be two fighting energy. So you have to discard the uh, the cast form. The cast form or the magnet side. Yep. So Will's going to admin here, limit uh, Nick's hand a little bit, and snipe one of his bench Pokemon. We see Will eyeing up that Dragonite. Like, what are you doing over there with that Dragonite, my dude? Yeah. Trying to take that thing out. So. Got Sean in the chat. Welcome, Sean, to the chat. Thank you for hanging out with us, my man. Will's got a, what, a space station? Is that what that is? Um, space a, Center. Space Center, that's it. Yeah. And also, what is this stadium here? Um, the one in play, Holland yeah. Ruins. Holland Ruins. Oh, Will just put out a new stadium. I don't believe it's Holland Ruins. Oh, I can't. Oh, Power Tree. Power Sorry, I'm tree. looking at my screen, and it's ah, delayed. Okay. All right, so Will is going to snipe that Dragonite into Oblivion here. Nick has got to be a little bit worried. Uh, he will be able to draw some cards off the top there with the Metagross's abilities. That's good, and this he can do it for, again. This is bad for Nick because he can't even. He has to. He has to evolve that Metang in the active, or else he's not really going to be able to get it out. Um, right, so... Or a switch, which doesn't look like he's seeing Is he kind of, like, stuck right here, then? Like, he can't evolve it. He is kind of stuck. There's, like, two switching cards in that Meta Knight list, I believe, but I, I'm not sure. Otto out here making fun of me for not knowing what some of the cards are called. <laughs> Dude, Otto, you get yourself in this seat and see how many you know, my man. <laughs> From 2006. This is the ultimate quiz, dude. Ultimate quiz on card names. This is 2006 format. All right, so Nick has got Rare Candy in his hand. He's got a Dragonite. No Dratini, though. So. Uh, I believe the Psychic Metagross Ooh, is Ooh, he does have Dratini. So he's got the Dratini drop, Rare Candy into Dragonite. Back then, you could. He's passing, though. You could just evolve the same turn you play. And he's got so, that metal on the Metagross, so he's kind of safe from the Metagross, or from the Snipe on Steelix. Yes, but not on that Dragonite, though. Nope, Can't, not on Will the Will could just find himself another cast form. And then... But if uh, if Nick gets enough energy in play, he can knock out the Steelix, and he'll only have one prize left. Right. So that's kind of the game that Nick's playing, it seems. Oh, for sure. Will has a long ways to go. He does still have to take four more prizes, which is a lot. All right, so that Celebi is going to allow him to put uh, a card back into his deck, and then yes. I think he's also then trying to quick search for that card. Yeah. So or, yep. that's what's going on? He's getting the, he's getting the uh, cast form. Okay. So is the Celebi, when he puts it onto his bench... He just uh, puts yes, a card. when you put it on your bench, it, it puts a card from your discard on the top of your deck. Oh, that's insane. Um, so you can, like, you know, you can draw it with Quick Search or with Jirachi or something. That's super good. Yeah. 
Okay, so really I mean, strong can, play from Will Sometimes there. you can, like, bump it and play it and, you know, shuffle it back into your deck with Retriever and stuff like that. Oh, uh, thank you, Nightblade, for the sub. Appreciate it. Awesome stuff. Thank you so much, Nightblade, for joining us tonight and for the support, my man. Appreciate it. All right. So Nick uh, still trying to grind out this win here, seeing if he can maybe get that Metang out of the active position. He searches his top four cards of the deck here with Metagross's ability. And let's see, he's got Pokemon, Pokemon reversal. reversal. Oh, can he? No. Oh, sad. So he's three out of four tails on Pokemon Reversal this game. Oh, is that a heads? Oh, it's a two. That's a two. Oh, it is a heads. Oh. oh, so what does he got? He brings out the Blastoise. He's going to blow this thing up. Okay. So pretty big play there. Nick's only got one prize remaining. Insane, but he's going to be able to punish this thing. And then Nick just has one prize remaining, but I don't know if he'll be able to take it. Um, I think so. I mean, Will has to discard all energy from this Lugia with no Blastoise in play in order to take this knockout. So it's just a lot going on here. Uh, we'll have to see if Will has the the juice left in his deck to be able to throw that Blastoise back into the deck. If Will doesn't, then that's just going to be game, I think. I don't know. He's got the two energy on the Steelix. Um, Otto, he got sniped by Steelix. Oh, he does have a Retriever. So he's going to quick search out the Retriever. And Retriever works kind of like Rescue Stretcher. Yes. Right? So he's going to basically Rescue Stretcher three energy or three Pokemon back into the deck. Pokemon Retriever. Put three Pokemon back into the deck. But he's already quick searched this turn. So he is searching the deck again, though. I don't really know how he's doing that. Think, what is he doing? I think he's swapping a choice. Okay, yeah, he wants the War Turtle. He realizes that he ain't got no rare candy left, so he's doing all. He's, he's rewinding his play a little bit. And then Nick is trying to show off that yeah, yeah, he actually has four rare candy down. Yeah. So he, just, he, <laughs> he Nick's actually, trying to show him. He's like, Nick's hey guys. like, yeah, guys, look, Will's being he's being silly. All right, he just made a bad play. So Will's like, hold up, yep, I'm going back into the deck, my guy. Yeah, we're we're gonna take that cast form out, put the uh, put the war turtle in. Still think you'll lose here, Will. I think yeah. that, uh, I think your your deck's just out of juice, my dude. Um. And then I think that Nick's just gonna be able to run away with this one. Yeah, I think you know, even though his Squirtle's safe now that he's down all his retreat of uh, all his reversals, it doesn't really matter. He's gonna take him a few turns to get it into play. Um. And Will's going to use the Elms there just to go get the War Turtle preemptively. That's fine. Next turn, he'll be able to Quick Search for Squirtle. He does take a knockout on this Metagross, but uh, Nick uh, only has to take one prize. So not, not a lot he has to do. Unfortunately, that Lugia gets knocked Ooh. out. Ooh. Yes, so to answer your question, yo, she does play the Psychic Metagross. Yes, and here yes. it is. Um, oh, the Psychic Metagross. Oh, Accelerates that's Metal that's Energy, right? Yeah. No, yes, it does. And uh, Oh, man, that's funny. So here he goes. He's got it. Uh, he's got two energy on that yeah, Metagross, it. and that's game. Yes, he's going to be able to attack for Lug game there on Lugia, the Lugia. Yeah, it's actually weak to Psychic. Oh, so. and the Lugia's <laughs> weak to Psychic. Oh, so, yeah, that's a pretty crazy play. Crazy, crazy game there from Nick and Will. So shout out to them for showing off some 2006 action there for us. Wild stuff there. So cool games there. Thank you so much, Joshua Carnell, for the bits. Thank you. Hey. Yeah, it is pretty confusing. <laughs> I'm glad you're digging it, Josh Carnell. Appreciate it. Uh, we do our best here to try and uh, get you guys as much Pokemon content as possible. So glad we were able to show off some old school decks. The 2006 yeah. format is just really wild. There's so much going on 2006 here. is pretty cool. It's like pretty much regarded by a lot of people who've been playing a long time as like the best format of all time, a Pokemon standard. Uh, I think the yeah. Haymaker Mirrors, oh, okay. best Whatever. standard format. I'm just talking about the lore of 2006. It's yes. like, it's like one of the most popular. It's also very expensive, though. So the decks are really cool to see because it's really hard to find those cards now. It is. There are a lot of uh, there are a lot of viable decks. It is a very, um, very diverse format. So there's a lot that goes into them. We have a, a bunch of them built ourselves. Yeah, so. I should start bringing them on Wednesdays. I'll start anybody who comes to Full Grip, like Brady was saying, and they look all, all super interesting. I'll start bringing the old decks again. And so we could even start them. streaming them, too. We can yeah. play stream a game or two after and stuff like that. Yes, uh, y uh, Yash is talking about how there was a deck called Minx, Mulock. Um, kind of ruined the format. Mulock kind of ruined the format. It was, like, hard to play, I think, from what I understand, in the time construction, uh, you know, the time uh, uh, limit. But, like, it, if you didn't have a time limit, it was pretty much, like, an unbeatable lock. Um, right. 
But yeah, so I think that uh, just about does yep. it for tonight's uh, for tonight's stream. I don't think that uh, it looks like you know Nick's probably you know he's probably out there doing yeah. whatever. So uh, we'll just uh, I can go get them if you want. But it's all good. All right. You know I'm kind of exhausted and also have to go to the bathroom. So all right. I had a great time tonight, guys. Thank you so much for all the subs. Thank you so much for all the bits. Thank you all for checking out the Full Grip Games tournament. Congrats to Nick. Baker for going 4 0 with Zora Gyarados today, and then also winning the 2006 matchup there against Will Mantho with that Meta Knight deck, Metagross Dragonite from 2006. Awesome stuff. So, really glad you guys uh, enjoyed the stream. Thank you all so much for hanging out. Uh, make sure to check out Mahone's Tricky Gym on YouTube if you have not already. And uh, like I said, I'm getting surgery tomorrow morning, so that is. Uh, a thing. Uh, I think this is probably just going to be my upload for tomorrow is the tournament from tonight for YouTube, and then I'll be back on my grind once I'm well and healed up from surgery. So, thank you guys for all the love and support. Appreciate it. And for, uh, thanks to Natalie too, yeah, thank you. for helping out with the uh, the tournament tonight. So, y'all have a great night. Hopefully you're enjoying the holidays and spending time with family and all that. Peace.